Uh, good, I just have to repeat, good, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The meeting is now resumed and is in public session. Before we begin, can I remind members, indeed members of the public as well, to turn off their mobile phones completely as they will interfere with the recording equipment. Uh, the minutes of the meeting 27 of March 2019 have been circulated. Are they agreed? Agreed. I propose that our correspondence be taken at the end of this meeting. Is that agreed? Agreed. Uh, the purpose of today's meeting is to consider funding granted by Sports Ireland to the Football Association of Ireland and related matters. In this regard, I would particularly like to welcome uh, Mr John Tracy, CEO of Sports Ireland, Mr Kieran Mulvey, Chairman of Sports Ireland, and Mr Colin McGuinty, Director of Strategic Programming, sorry, Programmes, Sports Ireland. You are very welcome to Falche, Falche Roiv. Um, I just have to read this privilege. Um, before we commence, and for the purpose of witnesses attending, in accordance with procedure, I am now required to read the following. By virtue of 1721 of the Defamation Act 2009, witnesses are protected by absolute privilege in respect of the evidence you are to give to the committee. However, if you are directed by the committee to cease giving evidence in relation to a particular matter, and you continue to do so, you are entitled thereafter only to a qualified privilege in respect of your evidence. You are directed that only evidence connected with the subject matter of these proceedings is to be given, and you are asked to respect the parliamentary practice to the effect that, where possible, you should not criticise nor make charges against any person or persons or entity by name or in such a way as to make him or, or it identifiable. Members are reminded of the long-standing parliamentary practice to the effect that members should not comment on criticise or make charges against either a person outside the houses or an official either by name or in such a way as to make him or her identifiable. I now invite Mr John Tracy, CEO of Sports Ireland, to make his opening presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of Sport Ireland, I would like to thank the committee for giving us this opportunity to speak to you all this afternoon. Today, I will give you an overview of Sport Ireland's funding relationship with the Football Association of Ireland, including the control mechanisms and management arrangements relating to their grant funding. At the outset, it is important to state that Sport Ireland was established in 2015 under the Sport Ireland Act and is a statutory body with the responsibility for the development of sport in Ireland. The functions of Sport Ireland are prescribed in Section 8 of the Irish Sports Council Act and includes powers to develop participation in sport, high performance, eliminate doping uh, in sport, to develop coaching, to develop guidelines for protection of children in sport, and the development of the National Sports Campus. The Sport Ireland Act confers considerable authority in Sport Ireland. And this is reinforced by our responsibility in investing substantial amount of public funding into sport. As a statutory agent we seek, uh, agency, we seek to develop strong sporting organisations and recognise the considerable public interest in a successful Irish sports sector. That said, we must be mindful of the limits of Sport Ireland's legal powers. Sport Ireland is not a regulatory body, and notwithstanding our focus on good governance and financial management in funded bodies, we respect the autonomy, autonomy of the national governing bodies of sport. Sport Ireland is responsible for the investment of public funds in sport and the subsequent oversight and accountability of this investment. All procedures and interactions with NGBs reflect this responsibility. NGBs are independent, autonomous organisations in accordance with the key corporate governance principles. The board of any NGB is collectively responsible for leading and directing the organisation's activities. Good governance recommends that the board cannot avoid its ultimate responsibility for actions undertaken in the name of the organisation. Sport Ireland places a high premium in, on good governance and encourages high standards in governments from up and all funded bodies. As the development agency is our aim to provide leadership in this area empower sport organisations to take responsibility for their own governance and meet the challenges they face. Sport Ireland assists all funded bodies to achieve excellence in all areas of their work and provides a number of interventions in the area of governance. This is broken down into a series of meaningful pieces of work ensuring both growth and sustainability moving forward. 
uh, in 2018, representatives of the FEI attended a number of governance seminars and government code workshops provided by Sport Ireland. The FEI was also one of the 50 sporting organisations to utilise the governance e-learning services, which assist organisations on the journey to compliance with the governance code. As the body tasked with the development of sport in Ireland, Sport Ireland's primary aim and responsibility is the security of and return on investment for the approximately 2.9 million in exchequer funding invested in the FEI on an annual basis. To this end, Sport Ireland is satisfied that effective control mechanisms and frameworks are in place with regards to our investment in the FEI. Sport Ireland is satisfied that our funding invested in the FEI is fully accounted for and expended on the purpose in which it was intended. This is verified on an annual basis by our finance controller based on a review of the FEI financial statements and signed uh, auditor statements stating that all our grants were expended for the purpose in which it was intended. As a further control mechanism, Sport Ireland also commissions additional external independent audit uh, approximately every three years. These audits independently review the FEI compliance with Sport Ireland grants terms, uh, terms and conditions and their overall management relationships arrangements as they relate to our funding. I will now outline in more detail the full oversight procedures and control frameworks within Sport Ireland with regards to our grant funding to the FEI. Sport Ireland invests in the long-term sustainability of NGBs. Since 1999, the Irish Sports Council now Sport Ireland primarily invests in the FEI to the youth field sports programme. This grant of 2.5 million is directed towards participation and technical development programmes. While funding is allocated to the FEI on an annual basis, Sport Ireland's strategic, uh, strategy clearly demonstrates a commitment that extends beyond the one year period. In 2018, for every one euro of Sport Ireland investment, the FEI invested four, million, four euros from, from their own resources. These sport, uh, these sport Ireland funds are spent across the following areas, grassroots, education, player development and central and region development staff. It is important to note that Sport Ireland youth field grants go towards technical department staff costs only, that is development officers, national coordinators and programme specific administrators. It is explicitly stipulated that Sport Ireland funding does not include any other salaries, for example, high-performance salaries, or salaries that, for those working in the professional game. During 2017, this equates to a part funding of 57 members of staff out of an annual average of 193 employees employed by the FEI. All other staff costs, including the role of Chief Executive, are funded by the normal business and other commercial operations of the FEI and are not financially supported by Sport Ireland. This is explicitly agreed with the FEI in writing and is subject to audit verifications. The youth field sport investment is broadly aimed at encouraging and creating more opportunities for young people to, part to participate in soccer across Ireland. Programs are based on a shared ethos of developing the grassroots of the game, growing participation numbers, improving standards and embracing communities uh, outside of the traditional base of sport. Sport Ireland youth field sport investments support detailed action plans which are implemented by a team of development officers and volunteers. As well as a number of initiatives specifically aimed at bringing young people into sport, there are also programmes to develop clubs and, and, and build links with communities. Also, with Sport Ireland support, the FEI built on the expertise of teachers, coaches, referees and volunteers so they can provide a quality experience for children and young people who become involved in sport. There is a strong emphasis within the FEI programmes on disadvantaged areas, social inclusion, people with ethnic minority backgrounds and an opportunity for players with a, with a disability. Sport Ireland also invests 142,000 in the FEI through the Women in Sport programme which aims to raise the overall physical activity level among women and girls and to support women's role within sporting organisations. In 2018, Sport Ireland also invested 195,000 in the women's national team. The core objectives of, this, of the fund is about raising standards and improving the standard of playing and training environment. A full breakdown of all funding allocated to the FAI since 2008 to present day has been provided to committee as part of the Sport Ireland submission. 
The committee should also note that in 2017, uh, our investment in the FEI represents approximately 5% of their total annual income, with the other 95% coming from the FEI's commercial activities, including sponsorship, deals, broadcasting and gate receipts. Control and management arrangements. With specific regard to the funding invested by Sport Ireland and the FAI, there are six layers of control in place. Number one, there is a strategic alignment between Sport Ireland's commitment to increasing sports participation and the development of sport in Ireland, and the FAI aim of developing participation, developing volunteer-led local clubs, educating coaches and referees, and promoting women's and girls' football. The aims are outlined in our representatives uh, rep, uh, uh, in our strategies. Sport number two, Sport Ireland operates a detailed grant application process for the FAI. Once received, detailed grant applications are assessed by the senior management team, including myself. The FAI application for funding is underpinned, underpinned by an annual program of actions that must assist the achievement of Sport Ireland's aims and objectives. The Board of Sport Ireland uh, is presented with a comprehensive paper outlining the funding recommendations, and the Board makes the final decisions on the allocation of funds to the FEI. Three, Sport Ireland has in place detailed terms and conditions of grant approval, which were reviewed on an annual basis for effectiveness uh, and re uh, relevance. These terms and conditions are signed by the FEI's President and Chief Executive annually, and are returned to Sport Ireland and retained on file. Among other things, the terms and conditions include a requirement to notify Sport Ireland in writing without delay in the event of any material deterioration in the FEI's financial position or in any other matter which may jeopardise the organisation's overall financial viability. Fourth, four, Sport Ireland operates ongoing performance monitoring of the FEI's programme in which they, we invest throughout the year. There is regular and ongoing liaison between Sport Ireland and the FEI at various levels. Sport Ireland meets periodically with the FEI to discuss performance, progress and any other issue that may arise. Sport Ireland staff also perform periodic verification visits to observe coaches, courses, seminars, grassroots programmes and other work undertaken within the scope of the funding. The FEI provide comprehensive information to Sport Ireland on these funds, programmes, events and levels of participation throughout the year. This includes submitting an interim report and an end of year report which shows FEI's performance against targets. Five, the FEI are required to submit the financial statements and a note from their AGM to Sport Ireland on a timely basis. The financial statements must include an auditor statement confirming that Sport Ireland grants were expended for the purpose of which it was intended. Sport Ireland's financial controller analyses the financial statements submitted by the FEI and highlights any concerns or questions that may arise. Any query must be satisfactorily addressed prior to the release of FEI grant final payment for the year. Six, at the direction of Sport Ireland Audit and Risk Committee, this entire system is, as it relates to the FEI, is also audited every three years by an independent external auditor. Sport Ireland audits of the FEI. Sport Ireland has an Audit and Risk Committee which commissions audits to Sport Ireland grantee organisations. Over the past decade, uh, the FEI has been audited by Sport Ireland independent auditors on more occasions than any other sporting organisation. Independent audits of the FEI have been completed on Sport Ireland's behalf in 2010, 14, 16, and all findings reported to the Sport Ireland Audit and Risk Committee. In 2016 audit, the scope of the most recent audit completed in 2016 included a review of compliance with Sport Ireland grant terms and conditions. The scope of this audit also includes consider uh, consideration of overall FEI governance and management arrangements as they relate to the grant funding of the 2.7 received from Sport Ireland. This includes a high-level review in the following areas, board, our committee structures and oversight reporting and minutes maintained, risk management practices including formal risk identification, monitoring and reporting, financial management controls and procedures, whistleblowing policies and codes of contact, uh, codes of contact policies and related pr procedures. The overall audit opinion concluded that reasonable assurance can be placed on the effectiveness and operations of internal controls. It should be noted that reasonable assurance was the highest level classification available. No high 
no high priority item was identified. One medium priority and two low priorities were identified. In 2014, others did not identify any significant and important items, and included that, that it was apparent that the FEI had been put in place processes designed, uh, designed to comply with the terms and conditions <laughs> as set out by Sport Ireland with regards to a grant aid uh, expenditure programme. In 2010, Audit concluded that the system in place provided substantial assur uh, assurance over the established, establishment, management and monitoring of contractual arrangements by way of funding process between Sport Ireland and the FEI. In conclusion, three separate independent audit firms have provided Sport Ireland with the highest level of assurance that all funding is fully accounted for and expended it for the purposes in which it was intended and the terms and conditions of funding were complied with. The committee should be aware that in November 2018, Sport Ireland Audit and Risk Committee approved our 2019 audit plan. The 2019 plan includes a provision for the audit of the FEI as per a normal procedure. The internal audit plan was presented to the Board of Sport Ireland at its February meeting and agreed. Conditions of funding. A copy of Sport Ireland's terms and conditions of grant approval had been provided to the committee for reference. With spe a specific reference to the FEI in accordance with Sport Ireland terms and conditions of grant approval, all grant funding made available by Sport Ireland must be ex expended in accordance with the organisation's funding submitted, su submission as approved by Sport Ireland. The FEI must sub uh, submit to Sport Ireland a copy of its financial statement made up of the end of year accounting year for the mid and for the mid year review process. All grants received from Sport Ireland must be separately identified as income in the organisation's annual financial statement. The FAI uh, and all organisations in receipt of over 200,000 must present its financial statements in the following manner. Uh, accounts fully audited by a registered auditor in accordance with the Irish GAAP to include a signed audit opinion specif uh, specifying the auditor's name and address and a statement for such others that each grant was, expend, uh, was expended in accordance with the approved submission. The committee should note that as part of a mid-year financial review of the FEI 2017 financial statements and advance to the final tranche of 2018 funding being released to the FEI, Sport Ireland Financial Controller raised a query with the FEI in relation to their 2017 liquidity position. So, so, specifically the introduction of a bank overdraft facility of 1.3 million and an increased net debt position in 2017. The query was responded to by the FEI Director of Finance, who stated, the net current liabilities position is a common annual position, mainly driven by deferred income balances, where advanced funds from grants, sponsorship and commercial agreements are being released over the life of a respective agreement. The overdraft position at, 2017, at December 2017 was within our overdraft facility with our banking partners and was a matter of timing rather than liquidity to concern. The, the balance has been in credit uh, for the majority of 2018 to date. The balance sheet position was re reviewed, reviewed by the audit team as part of the ongoing concern procedures, including review, reviewing future funds, and no concern was raised. The committee should also note that the 100,000 loan from the Chief Executive to the FEI was not disclosed as a separate note in the 2017 financial statements, and this information was not made available to Sport Ireland at any stage. Release of grant payments to the FEI. In line with Sport Ireland's Code of Governance and Business Conduct, the Chief Executive has the authority to pay to fund the bodies that operate on an ongoing basis up to 50% of their previous year allocation in advance of the formal approval by the Board. The Board of Sport Ireland is informed of payment at the next opportunity. In recent year, years, the FEI have written to Sport Ireland requesting an early drawdown of a, uh, of a portion of funding. Sport Ireland has always demonstrated a flexibility and willingness to facilitate uh, the FEI, FEI, as we have with other NGBs, with early drawdowns of portions of funding where possible and feasible to do so. In assessing an early drawdown request, the following, following are considered procedures within Sport Ireland's Code of Governance and Business Conduct, the cyclical nature of funding 
and Sport Ireland's commitment to funding a programme beyond any one year period, the NGV programme of action and programmes delivery, the risk, appetite and the achievements of Sport Ireland's strategic objectives. The committee should note there is a number of reasons why a funded body may request early drawdown or a portion of funding, including but not limited to a schedule, in a home, a schedule of home fixtures, financial cycle for the funded body and Sport Ireland, the hosting of major events, the timing and delivery of funded programmes and costs already incurred, the schedule of Sport Ireland grant processes and, and board decisions. Note, Sport Ireland pays the majority uh, of NGBs 75 per cent of their annual fund in January and February of the, of the year in question. However, board decisions on the award of funding to the FEI under the Youth Field Sport Programme is typically reached later in, during quarter two or quarter three. Sport Ireland has brought forward the date for board decisions on the Youth Sport uh, field uh, sport grants to April in 2018 and March in 2019. It is important to note that final payments to funded bodies in any given year follows a formal approval by the Board of Sport Ireland and is only released following the AGM of the organisation. The provision of an interim report, the provision of financial statements for the preceding year, which must be reviewed and approved by Sport Ireland's financial controller and the funded body meeting other mm -hmm. compliance obligations. Current ongoing matters in the FEI. Following meeting reports concerning a loan of 100,000 to the organisation by its now former Chief Executive and the request of Minister for Transport, Tourism and Sport, Shane Ross, TD, Sport Ireland wrote to the President of the FEI in March 19 seeking urgent clarification from the Board of the FEI on the circumstances of the loan and its repayment. Sport Ireland also sought the explanation of why we were not notified at any stage in 2017 about any apparent deterioration in the financial, FEI's financial position, which is a requirement of the terms and conditions of grant approval. Sport Ireland receives a response from the President of the FEI, which acknowledged the loan of 100,000 to the FEI and, and it then uh, it by the Chief Executive. However, the contents, context of the FEI's letter did not sufficiently explain the circumstances of the loan and its repayments now fully address the matter of compliance with Sport Ireland's terms and conditions of grant approval. On Monday, the 25th of March, Sport Ireland again wrote to the President of the FEI seeking, re-seeking clarification on the circumstances of this loan. More details were also requested by Sport Ireland in order to assist compliance with the terms and conditions of grant approval. Sport Ireland also so sought uh, reconfirmation that all state funding provided to the FEI had been spent for the purposes intended and in accordance with the approved submission. We also asked the FEI to fully, fully appraise us of any other significant issue uh, that have arisen or are likely to arise, uh, including key risks and actions proposed and how you propose to manage them. Sport Ireland is also aware, um, uh, so that was the letter. Uh, at the time of submission, I said the second letter hasn't been received. A second letter was received last evening in the Office of Sport Ireland by email and hand delivered to Sport Ireland uh, today at 10.45. Um, I will read the letter into the record, uh, if that's okay, yes, Chairman. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yep. yeah. <coughs> it's, it's April, April 2nd, 2019. Uh, dear Mr Tracy, thank you for your letter of the 25th of March 2019. I apologise for the delay in responding to your letter. I know the concerns expressed by Minister Ross with regards to media reports and your wish for clarification as to the circumstances of the short-term loan by the then Chief Executive to the Association. The Association ha has engaged Mazars to carry out an independent review of all matters in this regard. When that review is complete, I will write to you in more detail in relation to the circumstances involved as requested. In the meantime, the Association would be happy to meet with you or your officials to review the Association's financial records in, rela in relation to the use of state funding. The terms and conditions of grant approval require us to, sat uh, to satisfy certain conditions. I can confirm my understanding that the Association has utilised all state funding in compliance with the terms and conditions of grant approval. As you are aware from our statement of March 30, 2019, 
The association has engaged with the Office of Director of Corporate Enforcement and its dealings, and its dealings with their inquiries. The association has established a committee, which I am chairing, to work with our external advisors to urgently address the matter of concern. Yours sincerely, Donald Conway, the President of the FEI. Uh, we will be writing to the FEI uh, prob probably in the next day or so. Uh, we will be expressing our disappointment, uh, particularly at the timing of the letter, but also uh, which was received yesterday evening and then uh, hand delivered this morning. Secondly, we will be uh, raising uh, the context of the letter, which fails to, uh, far, which falls far short of what both requests were expected by Sport Ireland. The letter, letter does not provide any explanation on the circumstances surrounding the loan and its repayment. Mm -hmm. The board of the FAI has not provided any legit, uh, legitimate reason to why it cannot provide the information requested. Uh, in the absence of information, we cannot make any adjudication on whether the terms and conditions of grant <coughs> approval have been complied with. Uh, we still await an explanation on the circumstances around the, around the loan and its repayments. We will ask for the terms of reference from the Mass Earth Review uh, and uh, ask for assurance that we will be consulted as part of that review and that the final report, the full final report, will be provided on a timely basis. Uh, to Sport Ireland. Uh, we will ask for that. Uh, we will ask for a response by close of business on Monday next. If I continue with my statement now. Yeah. Sport Ireland is also aware of media reports relating to rental payments made by the FAI on behalf of its former Chief Executive. Sport Ireland has no knowledge of any rental payments which may have, have been made as with any NGB for sport. Staffing and contractual matters are entirely a matter for the board of the FEI. Structural changes within the FEI. Following the, pro uh, the prior release of the FEI statement on the senior management structure and on March 25th, Sport Ireland received a letter from, from the new FEI interim chief executive, Ree Welsh, outlined, outlining structural changes within the organisation on the back of a review of its senior management structures. The, outline, the letter outlined that the, board, that the board of the FEI had con commissioned a review of it by independent consultants, Jonathan Hall and Association Associates, which had adopted its recommendations. It stated that the Chief Executive Officer, John Delaney, had moved to a new position of Executive Vice President with immediate effect, given an overview of this specific defined role. The letter all co also confirmed that Ms. Welsh had been appointed as Interim Chief Executive with immediate effect. Notwithstanding a media release from the FEI on Saturday the 23rd, the letter of the FEI was the first occasion when Sport Ireland was formally notified of the review of the organisation's senior management structure and the creation of a new role of its executive vice president. Sport Ireland was not consulted on the commission of, or, or, or the preparation of, of this report. Sport Ireland had not, has not received a copy of this report. Governance Code and Board Term Limits the Code of Practice for Good, Go uh, Good Governance of Community and Voluntary and Charitable Organisations in Ireland is a resource to assist community, voluntary and charitable uh, organisations develop their overall capacity in terms of how they run their organisations. It is a voluntary code provided free to all boards, communities, executives of not-for-profit group to encourage them to check themselves against best practice in the management of their affairs. The government's national sports policy, published in July 2018, tasked Sport Ireland with overseeing a process whereby all, all NGBs and local sports partnerships adopt the code by the end of 2021. As part of this process, Sport Ireland will also identify and put in place the training and supports needed by the different sporting organisations to assist with the adoption of the code, notwithstanding the fact that NGBs such as the FAI are independent autonomous organisations are responsible for their own governance procedures. Sport Ireland provides a number of governance supports to all sporting organisations to assist them in their adoption of the code. In 2018, representatives of the FEI attended a number of government seminars and government code workshops provided by Sport Ireland. The FEI uh, were also one of the 50 sporting organisations to utilise the e-learning service which assist organisations on the journey to compliance with the code. Uh, according to the Governance Code website, the FAI uh, 
and the governance code or on the governance code adoption journey. Sport Ireland understands <coughs> that the FEI has established a governance committee whose remit is to ensure the FEI is compliant with the code. With regards to the term limits of, of boards, while Sport Ireland does not set term limits, it does support the adoption of the governance code among all funded bodies. While the governance code does not stipulate mandatory terms for board directors, it is the director's term of office guidance note it does state. The most common practice is that directors are appointed for a three-year term, and it, is, and it is considered good practice to put a limit on two to three terms on a director's service so that to ensure a cycle of board renewal. Conclusion. Sport Ireland's primary aim and responsibility is the security of and return on investment for the 2.9 million in exchequer funding invested by Sport Ireland in the FEI on an annual basis. Sport Ireland is satisfied that there are effective control mechanisms and frameworks in place with regards to our investment in the FEI and that our grant funding is used for the purposes in which it was intended. This is verified annually by signed auditor statements and approximately every three years by Sport Ireland's own independent auditors. The control mechanisms and frameworks uh, deployed by Sport Ireland with regards to our funding to the FEI can provide strong assurance to the committee. I have described Sport Ireland functions as per our established legislation, the Sport Ireland Act 2015, and our philosophy towards working with funded bodies to develop sport. Sport Ireland is mindful of its limits of its legal power. Sport Ireland is not a regulatory body, and notwithstanding our focus on good governance and financial management and funded bodies, we respect the autonomy, autonomy of the NGBs and the co collective responsibility of the boards. We aim to develop strong sporting organisations and identify and put in place the training and supports needed by the different organisations to assist with the adoption of the better governance practices. As per the Minister's request, Sport Ireland will continue to correspond with the President of the FEI and seek clarification, as I outlined earlier. Again, I would like to thank the Committee for your time today, and I would welcome any questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Tracy, for your very comprehensive address to our committee members and updating us on the latest correspondence you have received. And I would just like to say on a personal level that it would be very remiss of me not to acknowledge uh, your commitment to sport and indeed your success uh, in the Olympics and your absolute dedication to sport all your life. And I want to acknowledge that to you. And I'd also just like to say that on this day also we have in the House we have the Special Olympic team who returned recently from Abu Dhabi, so it's a great, great occasion that they came in and were received by the members of the Oireachtas. Uh, so, so sport is hugely important to you and to all of us, and I just want to acknowledge that. The second point I want to make is that we've, we've met in committee, and just to give you the update on the, the process we, we hope to follow here, is that we decided that each member will have 10 minutes of questions. It'll be questions and answers. There won't be speeches in that context. And the order, uh, we have an order which I'll read out in a moment. So, uh, so when the questions are asked, you will answer. And then we, Paul here will tell me when the, when the time is up so that everybody is treated fairly and appropriately. And as chairman, I recognize particularly uh, Deputy Catherine Murphy, who has, who has raised this issue long before any of these controversies arose in December and that uh, we had a number of communications with the FAI dates which were changed and so on. So uh, I just want to recognise her first and uh, she'll have the first 10 minute slot. And then Deputy Rock has agreed to share his time uh, also uh, with Senator O'Mahony. And then it'll be Deputy Troy, uh, Deputy Munster, um, Deputy Coppinger, uh, sorry, Senator O'Mahony, uh, Deputy O'Keefe, uh, and Senator O'Kadig and Deputy, sorry, Senator Frankie Fehan. And at that stage, then we'll go into a second round. So I, I'm going to be very clear on this that I'm going to stick to the time limits, right? And Paul will tell me, I'll tell you when you have a minute left in your time. So, uh, sorry, Deputy Rock, yeah. Chair, given the extraordinary statement, a uh, question for yourself. Uh, given sorry, yeah. the deeply disappointing and frankly insulting 
uh, second letter I'm sorry, that he received. Deputy, uh, I'm sorry, you, I have a, no, I'm I have sorry. A, I have a question oh, for on. you, Chair. I, I, sorry, with I'm, running, I'm running this meeting, and it's That's very fine. clear to me we, we have agreed a process. No, I'm, I'm not. Going, my question is about the process. To that process. Chair, my I'm question going, is about I'm correspondence sorry. received, Chair. I, 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 You're preempting my question. I, I'm going to adjourn this meeting. If you want to get your speak in, you have five full minutes. You had ten. You're taking five at your I own. I have a procedural risk. question for you, Chair. So, sorry, I'm taking. Uh, it's extraordinary. I'm sorry, I'm the chair. If you don't like it, you can protest, but I'm going on with this meeting. <laughs> we, spent, we spent an hour getting this right. It's so important that we're seen to act as a team. And I'm taking a... You and arising from that statement, like I have a question else. for you, but that's sorry, fine. Deputy Murphy, you have the floor for 10 minutes starting Extraordinary. Now. Uh, thank you very much, and you're very, you're very welcome, and obviously you've heard the, the time constraints that we have, so I'll try and be as short as I can with my questions, and I'd appreciate if you could uh, give me succinct uh, responses. Um, you, you use the word disappointment in relation to the, the letter from uh, the FAI in relation to uh, not complying with the request that you had. You have a very well um, worked out uh, terms and conditions of grant, grant approval and um, section 4.2 of that is very clear if a Sports Ireland request at any time um, during or after a period to which grant funding relates such information and documentation, documentation as Sports Ireland may reasonably require to satisfy itself as to, uh, as to the viability and sustainability of an organisation's overall financial position. You also have in this section 1.1 uh, which tells about the sanctions and 10.2 at the end, which re, uh, reiterates that. Um, I mean, you have within your gift there to uh, not pay grant, uh, grants or you can, you can seek repayment. Um, um, in, in the event of not um, receiving um, a response, satisfactory response by next week, um, what action will you take? We have provided 50% of funding to the FAI already this year, right? Uh, um, we have asked for, for, for this information, and we will be asking again uh, tomorrow. Um, we will, if we don't get a response, we have a board meeting on Tuesday, and the board will discuss it. And it's a matter then for the board to decide what action needs to be taken. Uh, if they're not compliant with the terms and conditions of funding, it will be it will it will require the board to look at what the, what uh, what actions it can take. Right. Um, in relation to the viability of, and I accept that this yeah. is a portion of the funding of the FAI, but it's the most played sport, um, so it's an incredibly big and important organisation. In terms of the viability of the organisation, the bridging loan. Uh, was, uh, you know, was to, we were told, was to uh, bridge a short-term uh, problem. Have you any understanding of what that was? What was that first letter you got? Did it give you any indication at all uh, as, to, as to what um, uh, that loan was for? Um, we have no, no we idea. Have, we, have right. we have no idea yeah. why okay. they no idea. required a loan. Okay, yeah. and, and, well, and Deputy, I would, by way of that, if they had come to us, we'd have looked at it, and if we could assist them, we would have, like we've done in the past with other sporting organisations. Yeah, I mean, essentially we saw it, 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 in a story in today's papers about a, a, you know, the prize money that came from UEFA through the organisation, um, <coughs> which, which would be normal enough in the same year, and it took a long time for that amount to be paid. Um, do you have concerns about, um, you know, the organisation's ability that in 2017, uh, you know, their, their ability, their sustainability in terms of, of uh, as a going concern, given that the, this most unusual uh, situation arose? Yeah. Uh, we also, we, we were, we're aware that, that, that cash, cash flow is, is an issue for them. Uh, we would be well aware of that. Uh, and uh, I think that would be well known within, within sport. Um, we, we gave the FEI 50% of the funding this year. We gave it, we gave 50%, uh, we, the second payment, second 25% was given at the end of, end of March. 
uh, so we're, we have no idea why that loan was given to them, why they, they needed a loan, and that's exactly why, why we're asking the question. We have, we have an investment to, uh, that we put in the NGB and it's a, uh, within the FEI, and it's a sustained investment over a long period of time. Uh, taxpayers' money is going into it, and we have very good programs in place. So the viability of those programs as a, uh, is critically important to us. Yes. So we want uh, strong organisations uh, that don't have cash flow problems, but we also know they have, they have, they have debts from Aviva, that they're, they're meeting those debt requirements. Uh, so we know it's not easy either. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I mean it's essentially, I, I've got to say, I, I, I understand the work that, that that's done and appreciate yeah. the work that's done mostly in, in a lot of cases by volunteers that really have a, a, a big investment in time in, 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 in this particular sport and you know if we could multiply it by 10 I'd like to see as yeah. much spent in sports as possible. Yeah. So let's not, yeah. uh, we're not, we're not across purposes on that, yeah. but we are looking at the sustainability yeah. of a really important and big organisation yeah. and there's a doubt about that. Yeah. Um, will you specifically go in and do a, a, an audit in relation to uh, in relation to that particular year <laughs> given the uh, given the things that have been unusual about that year yeah um, we have I think we're limited in terms of what our powers are right we have uh, our investment in the FEI is 50 percent of their total turnover uh, we audit that funding and compliance with that funding. That's what we audit. Uh, if we go into boxing or what have you, we're investing maybe 70 or 80 percent in the funding. So we have, uh, we're looking at that 70 percent. So we have, we're looking at the whole organization in that case. But we're limited with regards to our audit power, we believe, within organizations where we're giving a, small, a relatively small level of funding in, in So you're saying you're limited in what you can do? Yes, we're but limited. Are, but are there initiatives that you can take that will, uh, that, that, that are over and above what you've done already in relation to that year? Uh, I think this, uh, we've already decided even before this broke that the FEI would be audited as part of our auditing cycle this year. I think from our point of view, Deputy is getting reassurance for the two, 2.7 million we give them that that's going to the programs we that are uh, funded by us and we're happy overall over the years that that money has gone towards those programs which you have identified are important ones. All their other commercial activities is not within our authority or remit. That's, yeah. a, that's a problem that exists and uh, I don't know how we're going to resolve that problem. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to press this point because the time is quite short. You did, um, you did draw attention to the the change in the uh, in the role for the CEO to the executive vice president, and you hadn't been informed about that. I mean, there is an investment criteria um, that you you have a document about your investment criteria, and one of that one of the criteria that you will insist on is that jobs are advertised. Um, you, you know, we have we were told in your statement that he has moved. Uh, so, uh, and that happened with uh, the unanimous <coughs> approval of the board. Highly unusual. Uh, so, it, it's not in compliance with your investment criteria. What can you do about that? Yeah. Again, it's, it's not a position that we're, we're funding. So, I think we're limited in terms of what we can do with regards, uh, regards to that position. Um, yeah, but, but you, do, you, 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 know, you do expect a different standard. Um, because there's public money going yeah. into an organisation. You can't just segment something off to a corner and say the rest of the organisation doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, that investment criteria does insist on a particular set of behaviours uh, uh, and, and advertising jobs would be uh, one of those. It's, I'm, just, I'm just talking about your own rules. Yeah. <coughs> and and if, if we're funding a position in any governing body, it's one of the things that we insist on doing is that the, the position is advertised. We... As I said, we only found out after the fact as well, uh, and um, uh, that they had a new chief executive, and and, and uh, the former chief executive had been moved to one side. So we're we're kind of coming into this as well, uh, not knowing what the facts behind that were. We haven't seen the report, uh, but normal procedure is that those positions would be advertised. Yeah, you seem, seem to take quite. 
one minute, okay. You seem to take a kind of a very, you know, soft kind of approach with the, the FAI, work with them, if you like. Um, and I'm sure that's the same with, with, with other organisations. But it doesn't seem to be uh, reciprocated, and, and certainly this response yeah. will cert certainly give us that impression that this is, this is one-way traffic. Um, um, there has to be some sanction that you will... Um, uh, that, that you will uh, impose, or else this behaviour will continue. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were extremely disappointed by the letter. Extremely disappointed with the letter. Um, we have, we have the right to ask about terms and conditions of funding, and um, this letter provides no information whatsoever for us. Uh, it's now a matter. We will write to them, as I said, tomorrow, and it'll be a matter for the board uh, uh, to decide what the next steps are going to be. Uh, but uh, it's generally very disappointing to receive such a letter, such a letter like this, to such an important, to some important issue. So, Mazaras is not a way of avoiding this. No, it's, yeah. it, it, uh, they can do their own review with regards to what happened in, uh, and the circumstances. But uh, we think we should be able to get an answer quicker than that. And uh, is if uh, the circumstances alone and how it's paid back, the need for it. Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to explain that, I would imagine. Okay. Five minutes, you agreed to share voluntary with uh, Senator O'Mahony, so five minutes start now. Uh, first of all, welcome. Um, these questions are quick and require a yes or no answer, really. Uh, first of all, did the FA draw down funding early in 2019? Um, yes. Did the FA draw down funding early in 2018? Yes. Did the FAI draw down funding early in 2017? Yes. Did the FAI draw down funding early in 2016? I believe so, yes. Does this not point to serious cash flow issues within yeah, the organisation? it does. Did it raise flags within your organisation? Um, we would be aware that they are carrying large debt and that, that cash flow is always an issue with them. Um, uh, but again, uh, the sustainability of the organisation is still moving forward. The, the, uh, their debt has, has decreased uh, in recent times. Uh, but it is, it is a concern. But what we, would do, what we obviously do is monitor these organisations on an ongoing basis. Uh, and um, uh, while we didn't, we didn't believe, uh, we didn't believe, what we obviously want to do is maintain the programmes. And uh, when you're, a lot of your funding is going to uh, people that work uh, within the sport, uh, our concern is to maintain those programmes as best we can. Uh, we, we fund on a staggered basis, and what we're actually doing is funding on a staggered basing, basis is protecting the, the, the funding that we, that we give to them. And only when we have all the compliance pieces ticked off do we, do we, do we follow through with the second 50% of the funding. So there is, there is checks and balances there, and uh, all the time, and we're all the time monitoring it. Yeah. I understand. It, it, did you seek to meet them? You said cash flow is a concern. Did you seek to meet them in relation to this? Do, do seek to meet them, the FAI, in relation to cash flow being a serious issue? Yeah, they seem to be able to get by, as I say, yeah. Okay, did you seek to meet them? Oh, meet them. Yeah, we would meet regularly with the, with the FAI and Colin here, would, who is the liaison person, would meet with them regularly. When was the last time you met with them, Colin? I met with the, the FAI in, in December. Would have met them in, that's in relation to, <coughs> excuse me, our, our programmes, our investment and how, um, how, how, how the programmes are delivering against the targets for the year. I, I think also in relation to the, the, to the financial statements query and the early drawdowns, I think it's important to, to note that the, the accounts are signed off by the FAI auditors on a going concern basis, which would have indicated that there are no short-term solvency issues, and that is something that we would have mm. paid very close attention to as part of the mid-year review review process. Yes, there was queries raised, Deputy, in relation to the, the financial positions, and I think mm. uh, our Chief Executive has outlined those in his, in his statement. So, Sport Ireland have not met with the FEI this year, is that correct? Um, not in relation to their um, grant application process or the, or the uh, new Sport, Sport Ireland sought meetings with the FEI and been declined? Uh, pardon? Has Sport Ireland sought meetings with the FEI and been declined? Uh, no, 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 Deputy. Um, I think normally uh, Q1 would be uh, in relation to the review of the grant application that is received at the end of January. It's presented mm -hmm. to our board on the 5th of March, and 
the normal course of action would be to meet with the, with the FAI after the board decision and the confirmation of the funding in relation to the, the distribution and the allocation of that funding during the year. Obviously, events over the last couple of weeks have, 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 have I think it's fair to say, overtaken that process mm -hmm. this year. Um, but it would be our intention in relation to the Youth Field Sports Programme as a, as, a, as a normal course to, to meet with them and okay. to discuss oh. progress, targets, sure. etc. My time is very short, so I need to keep things a little tighter, if you There's don't mind. Regular uh, there are regular meetings with the FEI on an ongoing basis. Okay, yeah, okay, I understand. On the much obliged, thank you very much. I wish I had more time, and I will come back to you all later on. On the sorry, you, you decided to share your time. I'm fairness, you know. You can come back again anyway. There's nobody. My, my colleagues deserve time as well, of course. No, no on the 15th of June 2017, Sport Ireland approved a grant for the FEI. Is that correct? That's correct. On the 16th of June 2017, the FEI requested a drawdown of 25% of that grant. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. On the 16th of June 2017. John Delaney's loan was repaid by the FEI. Does that not strike you as peculiar? And does that not strike you as some kind of serious cash flow issue within the organisation? Well, that's exactly why we've asked those questions. Okay. And you were aware of those dates? Yes. Okay. But we weren't. We weren't aware, aware of the 100,000 loan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, indeed. And that's that, a very that, that, I think serious we all issue found out about that at the same time. Have you asked, Kieran, then, if such further undisclosed loans have taken place? We have asked in the last letter, is there any other issue uh, that you need to identify that has, has taken place or likely to take place, uh, that anything that we should know with regards to any risks to the association. We've, okay. had, we've asked that letter in a previous okay, letter. And, and finally, and that just wasn't to responded to by the FEI. By the FEI, because their, their response was, well, frankly, insulting yeah. uh, to your organisation. Finally, does the more, and just to finish this line of logic, does the more recent disclosure undermine your level of satisfaction for the affairs and audits of previous years? Uh, we can only stand by independent auditors that we send in ourselves. And as I said, we had three independent auditors that went in, three separate companies, and they all came back. We are satisfied in terms of the funding that we put in, the compliance with, 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 with our terms and conditions. We certainly believe we get value for Monday money. The auditors have come back every time and said the money that was given to the FEI was expended for the purposes in which it was given. We can't really go much further than that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, just on the basis of the letter that you received this morning and the email on it last night, uh, what, what actions the board you said, uh, said were meeting next week, what actions are, at your, are available to you? What actions, when you, when you meet on that, in response to not getting the information? the FEI one more opportunity to respond and we will write to them probably tomorrow and give them until Monday to, Monday to respond. We have a board meeting on Tuesday and then it's over to the board to decide what action needs to be taken. Well, could I ask maybe the chairman of the board of what, what, what I, I mean, could you decide next week to stall on all funding that, that, we're, that you, you give to the FAI? What other, what other actions can you take? Well, I think in accordance with corporate governance and good corporate governance, uh, the chief executive and myself will have to present to the board our assessment of whatever reply we do receive, and I hope, hope there would be more forthcoming next Monday. But we then have to take our fiduci fiduciary duties uh, seriously, that if we're not satisfied with the governance of the organisation, we have to engage in a robust, direct conversation with them, because uh, we have to be reassured uh, and get absolute reassurance that the monies we uh, provide to the FEI are spent for the purpose intended, and we have every reassurance at the moment on yeah, that. Yeah, but I, I just the wider, I'm the wider to tie down what we, exactly you can do. Well, de de deputy, we'd have to take that under advisement because there are two strands here. One is that we don't penalise the programmes by non-funding the programmes, and we had this with boxing previously, where we separated the corporate issues from the funding issue in the sense that these are for development officers, they're for programmes, they're for summer programmes, they're for social inclusion programmes, they're for women in sport programmes. 
it is not our intention that those who participate in those lose any momentum or landing funding of any of those programs. It is the board of the FAI, the board of the FAI that have a corporate responsibility for this. And if we don't get the answers, and indeed you don't get the answers from your meeting with them, then we have to revisit this issue with them. But in the meantime, I, I, I don't want to get into a situation where those who need the money don't get it or there's any threat over it. It's just uh, I know. the point I'm making is that yeah. from yeah. what you're saying, I, I'd be interrupting from what you're saying, that you don't have many levers to get this information from them. That's, that's the point. I, I'll move on from that. Yeah. In relation to the, you know, the time of your letter that you got this morning and in relation to the review of governance that they instituted here, at the, or the, in, in, the FII uh, instituted in February, and the fact that they made an appointment and giving a new role to the CEO within 48 hours of, that, of, of the FAI getting that re review, would you have any comments on the, the haste in the new appointment that was made by the FAI? No, we're surprised. We wouldn't have been consulted as part of that process. That would be the first thing that we would say. Uh, we, we don't know when uh, that exercise started, what the, what the data was, uh, how, where, how they got, what process they had, uh, how they got to the, those conclusions. And uh, we would also uh, have to ensure, we would like to, obviously there can only be one chief executive uh, uh, in terms of the organisation going forward. There can only be one person that reports to the board in terms of responsibility, it's the chief executive. And they're, they're the type of questions that I think the press release did raise with, our, with ourselves around it. So there is questions that we have as well around, around that appointment. Just, uh, uh, one minute, okay. Um, are you happy with the level of scrutiny overall that you have of overall governing bodies? Because it would seem, I mean, I've been on this committee for some time and I've seen your own frustration with the, with the IABA appointments that they made. Uh, I have seen the relationship between the Olympic Council of Ireland and how that blew up on everybody's face. And are we, you know, and each time that happened, we had a situation where this will never happen again. And we, we, we have a plethora of, of stuff in the FAI that over the years. Uh, and is, is it just going to, ha has it just happened again? Um, we deal with over 100 organisations and I, I always say to the board that at any given time we have three or four organisations that we're dealing with corporate governance issues. We're dealing with voluntary uh, people uh, that get on boards and that's the space that we're in, right? Uh, we do an awful lot of training around corporate governance with volunteers and with executive people and uh, sometimes you're, you have you have a very good board in place and then there's a change and there's an election and you, you, you have a new board that mightn't have the skills and you're back to square one again. So there's a bit of that that happens quite a lot. Uh, so it's, it's constant, you need to be on, on the case all the time. Uh, uh, we don't like it when, when sport is, is, on, is on in the public lights like today. Uh, it's not good for sport. We need to be getting on with our business and we have we're just coming off the back of, I think, probably last summer was one of the most exciting sport, uh, sporting years of all times in terms of the organisations we're funding. So uh, it's like a sport, sport itself, you have good days and you have bad days. And today is not a good day for sport to be in here talking about governance within the FEI. And we're deeply disappointed to be in here talking about this issue with yourselves because we shouldn't be in here talking about governance. Uh, we would expect that all, all our organisations that are on the, uh, on the journey in terms of the governance code would have the highest standard going forward. And that's what we'd expect from any organisation, including the FEI. Uh, thank you. And you're welcome uh, to our visitors this morning, this afternoon. Um, can I ask, why did you not bring the chair of the Audit and Risk Committee with you today? Um, there was no particular reason. We just... Um, quite happy for, for, for Mary to come and Mary Dogan to come and, and talk to talk to the committee if you want. Even we're talking about audit auditing of of grant aid, I would have felt that she was possibly one of the best place to present before the committee today. Okay. 
It's fine. Um, you say uh, Sports Ireland places a high premium on governance and encourages high standards in governance. All of us around the table encourage people to vote for us every day. There's no guarantee that they will. Mm. Surely there needs to be much stronger than encourages. Surely there needs to be a requirement of standards in governance, as the Code of Practice in 2016 would stipulate. Can I ask, do you consistently apply the same standards across all um, the governing bodies? Um, it's, it's a yes or no answer. Uh, yes, we do. Um, but can I ask then can me, why... Can, can, can I maybe answer the question? Uh, no, 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 I've got the answer I want, the Chairman, no, so I'm just going to supplement your question. I, I think, look, he's a witness. He's here to help us. I, 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 I think his. not one fit size fits all, right? We're dealing with different organisations, uh, bigger organisations. Uh, the, the bar is a bit higher. Uh, we're on a journey. Uh, the government policy is that we, we have all the organisations adopt the Community and Voluntary Code by, by 2021, and we're on that journey. Uh, it will be then a condition of funding going forward that that standard is, is maintained. So 2021 I'm, is the date. I'm, I'm aware of that. But I suppose when you look at what standards you imposed on the IABA in 2017, and you, you, at the beginning of June yourself... Uh, and Minister Patrick O'Donovan warned the IABA that funding risked, risked being suspended over a governance issue and set a one-month deadline. Um, they get 1.3 million annually from yourselves, judging on the calculation. Um, the FAI get 2.7 million, which is a smaller percentage of their overall pot, but it's quite a, a substantial amount of Sports Ireland funding. Um, and I think, and you said it yourself, Mr Tracy, a minute ago, that you have a different standard on bis bi bigger organisations than smaller organisations. The, the bar and is I would, higher for I the would, bigger organisations. I, I would point that the bigger organisations have a much better capacity to have better governance uh, than smaller organisations. I agree with you. In 2018, in your statement, you said the FAI attended a number of governance seminars and governance code workshops provided by Sport Ireland. What board members attended those workshops? I don't have the names, but I know uh, the president of the FEI did, it, did attend them. Okay, you might su supply it, because ultimately yeah. the board members yeah. are, the, are the responsible people. Yeah. And that um, they utilise governance e-learning. Can we get a history of the, how um, the FEI utilise governance e-learning? Yeah, absolutely. You said... Um, effective controls measures. Sport Ireland is satisfied that our funding invested in the FAI is fully accounted for. Um, how did you satisfy um, this? Is it by uh, internal or external audits? Uh, so, sorry, Deputy, could I have uh, a question? Sorry. Uh, Sports Ireland is satisfied that our funding invested in the FAI is fully accounted for and expended on the purposes for which it was attended. Yeah. How did you satisfy yourself? Is that by way of internal or external audits? We have two pieces to it. Every year, uh, uh, the auditors of the FEI send us a note saying the, the f funding was expended for the purposes in which it was given. That's given every year by the FEI auditors to us, right? We verify it ourselves every three years by auditing the three main field sports. So in 2019, there'll be an external audit done uh, by an independent auditor in 2019. Okay. The, 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 the last audit that was done was 2016, correct? Yes. And I suppose it was the only audit done it by Sports Ireland. The previous two were done under the previous incarnation. Can I ask, um, was, how was the auditor selected? Was it put out to tender? Yes. How many people tendered? Calm. I'd have to come back to the committee with that level of detail. It's, it's, it's some time ago, but it's it was, okay, it was under a competitive procurement yeah. process. Yeah. How, how was that, uh, the findings of that audit delivered? Was it delivered to the full board of Sports Ireland or was it delivered to the audit committee? It was delivered to the audit committee in, in, in detail and then the, audit, the board would get a, re a report as well in due course. Was there, was there any special reports done around this audit? 
Special reports done around that audit? I'm not sure. I, they, they audited for us. They came back with a report. Uh, we shared it with the FEI. Uh, obviously went to the audit committee. Uh, there was no major findings on it. And uh, uh, at the end of the year, a report is given to the board of Sport Ireland as well around all yeah. these reports. I just, yes, you noted in your address um, that uh, the audit report included a high-level review of the following areas. I won't list them out again. Yeah. If five areas yeah. identified, there was no reference whatsoever in that audit about corporate governance in your own address. Well, well, I think, Deputy, the, the, the scope of the audit related to the grant funding of the 2.7 million received from Sport Ireland and the high level of review did include a review of the committee structures, the oversight, the controls, which, which are the, the, the elements of governance as they, they related to that 2.7 million. So I think, I think I would contend that the, the, the audit went much broader than just following the money. It also looked at the governance, oversight, control, the management of, around that 2.7 million on behalf of Sport Ireland as well. But it didn't look at the broader corporate governance? Not of the entire organisation, and I think um, it, well, it, 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 terms of our powers, you know. it, it was very much focused on the, the 2.7 million. I think you need to go back and just, when you're talking about corporate governance, the boards of every organisation is, respons is responsible for the corporate governance of the organisation itself. And they have their duties and responsibilities, and, and I think we need to bear that in mind. Uh, we can provide guidance, which we do on an ongoing basis, on corporate governance issues, but we're not responsible, and we don't have any, any, any powers in our act around corporate governance. We have no, we're not a regulatory agency. But you, you do have a responsibility to ensure that adequate corporate governance is going on, or you have the power to suspend funding, we albeit have, at, at varying levels depending we, on the organisation in yeah, question. We have, we have the power uh, within the act at any time uh, to to cease funding or suspend funding. Okay. At any time, uh, Mr Mulvey, in your term as Chair of Sports Ireland, did any of your board raise questions in relation to potential misgivings or concerns in relation mm. to um, issues in the FAI? No, not in my term as Chairman of Sports Ireland, no. Or the previous... Um, in the Irish Sports Council, no. No. You're sure? Yes. Okay. But it, I know what the deputy is referring to. There were other issues raised, but they hadn't to do with well, the funding of the I'm, FAI. I'm only asking a question. Yeah, well, I, I think I might know the reason why you're asking. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well. Uh, 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 <laughs> Pardon? Uh, okay, all right. Can I... Can yeah, I sorry, deputy try, yeah. Can I ask... Um, it's stated, and we know that John Delaney, as CEO, was a full board member uh, of the FAI up until, I think, two days ago when he handed in his resignation. Um, do you believe this is a breach uh, of the code of practice of 2016 when a CEO should be an ex officio member of the board as opposed to a full board? <coughs> whoever wants to answer. I'm happy well, to answer. I think we should uh, be clear here. All the bodies we fund have different histories, different structures, different arrangements between full-time officials and elected officials. It's also true of charities. It's also true of trade unions. It's also true of most organizations in the country. What we don't lay down, and we've never been asked to lay down, is that a chief executive is not a member of the board of an organization. But if that becomes a condition of funding and laid down by policy of the government, naturally we will impose that. But you, you don't feel then it's a breach of the code of practice of 2016? So I don't consider it. The code of practice of, is a voluntary code. The charities code at the moment, the DOCUS code, is a voluntary code. We have until 2021 to have that implemented and there's a, a time scale laid out in 2019 which is a, lear a learning year. 2020 is the year we expect it to be implemented and 2021 comes compliance. So everybody will know then but in, in regard to this whether a person is a CEO is a member of a board or not that's a matter for their own constitution. 
Personally, I don't believe it's good practice that a CEO be a member of a board. Just to, to, to Our point CEO of, is not a member of the board. No, I'm aware of that. Um, your CEO is earning substantially less than the CEO of the FAI. I'm aware of that too. Um, uh, just uh, to, when I was, to, when to I was chief executive of the Labour Relations yeah. Commission, I was earning substantially less as well. Okay, look, just I'll tell you, uh, to, I have two. The last, the last, the last que question, question yeah. because we've been fairness and appreciate. Yeah, no, no, um, no, 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 no. You, you've, just before the conclusion, you talk in relation to term limits. Um, uh, and while Sports Ireland does not set term limits, it does support the adoption of the governance code. And the most common practice is that directors are appointed for a three-year term and you go on. Can I ask how many of your own boards, of your own board, is failing to meet your, um, what the best common practice is? I suppose our board is, are appoint is appointed by the minister. There's nothing to do with us sitting here today. Those appointments are made by the Minister himself. Yeah, but how many of your board members are sitting on the board longer than what is considered good practice of two to three terms um, of approximately three years a term? I.e., is there anyone on your board longer than nine years? Bearing in mind that your board is a reconstitute board of two previous boards. We have a new board. It's 2015 was Sport Ireland was established. But the majority members of that board came from the, two, the merged two bodies. Yeah, but yeah, it, it, yeah. And there's a replacement schedule under the Act for directors. But I'm just asking, what, on, under the, the, what you said yourself, the most common practice and the, adopt, the support, the adoption of the governance code is there any of your board members in excess of nine years on the board? Not to my knowledge. Think, Nobody. Uh, I have to take oh. Deputy Monster. I think the fact. <coughs> to my knowledge. Yeah, right. Unless you're talking about me, Deputy. Are you? You're a board member. I'm the chairman of yeah. the board. And how long are you on the board? I'm on the board of Sport Ireland since 2015, and previous to that, I was uh, chairman of the Air Sports Council. Since. 2009. Nine. Okay, so, don't, so then you're the only member that's on the period yeah, longer than nine years. I have a time years. limit on my appointment yeah, I think, I by think, the government uh, of the country. I think, can I, can I just intervene here and say I think the, the record shows or will show how long you're there. I don't think it shouldn't be and isn't a personal matter uh, or for the committee. Deputy Munster, you have your ten minutes starting now. Um, can I ask you personally, are you concerned about, um, concerned that your auditing process is lacking um, and would you agree that just, ha just having your own independent aud audits every three years is insufficient? Um, okay, there's two pieces, as I said. Every year, uh, the FEI auditors give us, a cert give us a letter to say the money, exchequer money, was expended for the purposes of which it was given, right? Mm -hmm. Then We've used, as I said, three different auditors to go in and audit uh, the FEI. All of them have come back uh, uh, basically saying the money that we gave to the FEI was expended from the purpose it was given, right? So we are satisfied in terms of the audits that we've, ta we've undertaken uh, and, and the findings of, of, of those. We're also satisfied that our money is the investment by government in the FEI is good value for money, that we get a very good return from a, a, a return. And we, we are also have verified that our terms and conditions of funding were met. We've, oh, we're now in the, in the position where we're asking the FEI around our terms and conditions, around the circumstances alone. So we have acted <coughs> when there is an issue, uh, and we're acting now. So we are satisfied in terms of what happened previously. And we, as I say, we will be auditing the FEI in 2019. I'm just asking on the basis that um, it appears, you know, for something that's, that's happened to develop as it does, it appears that maybe um, some organisations feel that there, you know, there's the chance that there's only going to be an, indep an independent external audit carried out by yourselves every three years, that it, there might be an opportunity for, you know, um, for what's... what's happened so far, but the very fact that you've um, 
as it stands now until you're satisfied otherwise that the, the FAI have breached um, the, the, the code of, or the, the, terms, the of terms and conditions of grant approval as it stands now until, unless they can prove otherwise to you. That, that is the question we're asking, mm, yeah, part of I'm the saying, circumstances. Yeah, and do, do you feel that you'd need additional powers and functions um, in relation to, you know, perhaps maybe carrying out that um, sort of independent audit on an annual basis? Do you think that that, that would be more um, diligent to do that with all organisations in I, receipt I, I of like um, in substantial I like I'll let funding. the chairman come in on it. Yeah, I, I would feel, Deputy, because of the sizable amount of money that's granted to Sports Ireland by the government every year on behalf of the taxpayer, uh, both in terms of the um, level of uh, s funding to sporting organisations that we have no difficulty with annualised audits or at the moment the reason we have maybe two or three yearly audits is the resources available to us because one of the issues we want to expend as much resources on sport mm -hmm. and 85 87 percent of the funds we have get have you ever requested additional have, resources in you know to carry out annual audits right. We have, re not Fall specifically, in. but Fall for, in. for yeah. administration and oversight of sport. We've made annual submissions, but not, not for, for auditing. Audits, annual but, audits. I mean, okay. if, if the Oireachtas were to grant us that power, naturally, we would. It, it, the, but the no, Act I'm just asking, have, have you formally requested as a body? Not specifically, to, not no, specifically okay, on right. the auditing, okay. on the basis just in relation that to, we cycle um, these. Okay, yeah. thanks. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, he has sorry, just, just, can I just, right, no, just before you do... I, I understand the importance of the question, but I think the witness is entitled to give his full answer. I think you were just we, finishing we did, think, there. And then if you want to come in, yeah, I just it, want to get it, answers. It's quick. To questions. What we Sorry, try to do, it's Chairman, it's members of the committee, is on a cyclical basis, every two or three years, try to get around to as many sporting organisations as we can in the context of the funding. Uh, with a lot of organised sport organisations, the totality of the organisation's funding almost comes from us including the payment of officers within it. In the case of the bigger field sports and others uh, who have large commercial contracts, that's a, another issue, but we have only authority and power in relation to our money. We rely, as uh, maybe foolishly sometimes has given evidence in the past, not just in sport but elsewhere, on professional auditors of you know, big names in this country of international companies to audit organisations and that they are audits. Okay, I thanks. I'm and, satisfied. You know, it just, and, yeah, yeah. and the people That's we okay. procure yeah, to do independent on on. audits are from reputable yeah. companies. No, I'm just, yeah, my point was... Okay, sorry, I just want to make the point that uh, I think Mr Tracy would like to say something here as well, just as helpful. Just the point that I want to kind of uh, verify is that the audit committee uh, have decided this year that we will do we'll be doing more audits of ngbs uh, this year and that was that was a decision that was made previously and we also asked the ipa uh, to review our internal audit process and they came back to us this year with a satisfactory uh, uh, finding on that column do you want to add anything yeah, that was a, just Okay, yeah, I was going to say this. Uh, a piece of work that we commissioned last year with the Institute of Public Administration to review the effectiveness of our internal audit function to make sure that it was delivering for, for Sport Ireland. Uh, the IPA produced a report, it went to our, our, our Audit and Risk Committee. Um, and was a very, very positive report, um, some, some recommendations um, minor in nature to, to, to strengthen and, and bolster the, the effectiveness of our internal audit function. And as our Chief Executive said, we, we are expanding the number of audits that we are doing this year. Okay. But will that mean, in effect, and I'm talking about primarily the, the larger organisations that are in the, you know, the, the most receipt of the most funding, will that allow for annual audits to be carried out, just yes or no to that? We're not in the position, Deputy, of annual, of annual audits uh, on our behalf. Obviously, we seek signed auditor opinions on an annual basis from each uh, governing body, uh, depending Maybe on the threshold of what's funding. Happened, that's perhaps something you could look at um, more seriously in the future. I, I, I think, Deputy, the, 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 as, as our chairman has mentioned, like our, our primary uh, goal is to invest in sport and to invest mm -hmm. as much resources into sport as possible. We could increase our uh, 
the, the number of our internal orders further. Um, but essentially, that's taking money, taking money from us. I, I yeah, think our no, internal I'm just, audit I'm program, talking about good it, governance it's as well, and that's what it's about, go, good governance and adhering to the terms and condition of yeah. state yeah. grant approval. It's from yeah. that aspect that I'm asking. Yeah. Um, just in relation to sanctions, um, and I know other deputies had asked about sanctions. I was ask, going to ask what sanction will you impose, what specific sanction will you impose? And I know you had said earlier um, that it was going to be a matter for the, the board to decide and that, you know, those, those that need the money will, are the ones that will risk being deprived and nobody wants to see that happen. But at the same time, I got the distinct impression that if it's a thing that you're not satisfied and it goes to your board meeting next Tuesday, I got the distinct impression that there will be no sanctions. As chairman of the board, I, I would feel uh, next Tuesday is too early for us because to a large degree, a deputy, apart from seeking an appropriate, adequate and comprehensive reply to the correspondence we've had with the FAI, <laughs> to be honest with you, we'd like to see what the outcome of your own uh, hearing next Wednesday is when you will have directly the FAI and its officers on board in here and we'll have to make an assessment then on the basis but I would feel Tuesday's board meeting will take stock of the situation and re receive a report from the executive on this it may be a later board meeting but we will have to be reassured uh, that everything is okay and we have to be reassured before any further tranche of funding, of which 25%, I think, is left, we will just have to reassure ourselves that when we expend that, that these issues that have now arisen are answered to your satisfaction as representatives of the Oireachtas in this matter, and that the Minister himself, as a policy matter with the Board of Sport Ireland under the Act, also has an engagement with us on it. Okay, thank you. Um, I take it an issue like of this nature has not um, arisen, say, um, with the GAA or IRFU, and I'm just wondering um, why do you think that the FAI has this problem? Um, the FAI had said that it was a bridging loan, and uh, do you find it credible that um, an organisation like the FAI would be in such dire financial financial such a dire financial situation that it would have to resort to getting a loan of 100,000 from its their CEO's personal bank account do you think that is credible um, we find it extraordinary to be quite honest um, and uh, that is why we've asked the questions that we've asked uh, we're waiting for an answer as you see from today we didn't get an answer and um, um, generally, if, uh, if an organisation, and we've had experience of this down through the years, if an organisation is in financial trouble, they come in and talk to us. And it might be a timing issue, it might be dues or our affiliation fees are not due uh, until a month later. And we work with the organisations to oversee and make sure they, they meet that, that cash flow issue. A lot of them are, are very tight on funding. That is generally the way it's done. There's dialogue with ourselves, and we are there to help and support these organisations. And the organisations have continued and, and prospered. But occasionally they do are into trouble. But there is dialogue. There was no dialogue along, around this. Okay, thank you. So, given the recent decisions taken by the FAI board, and you just touched on it there, the fact that they didn't inform you that they're in financial difficulties, the fact that it wasn't accounted for in their accounts, that you weren't informed of it, and um, that they changed the rules to allow long-serving members um, remain in situ for further four years, despite the fact that many of them had exceeded the recommended term under the, the governance code and the, the fact that they've created a job for, for John Delaney that allows him to attend board meetings without being a member. Given all of that and everything that's come to light in, in recent weeks, do you have confidence in the FAI board? Just before you answer that, just to let you know, and it's an excellent question. We've one minute left. Is that okay? We'll move on to the next person. There's some fairness of time. Um, I would like when we ask questions of the FAI, as we'd expect from every organisation, that they would answer them post-haste. 
as quickly as possible. As it stands, as, do as, you have confidence as in As it the stands FBI right board? now, we have many questions. Do you have confidence uh, in the board? Well, let's put it this way. Where, where, where we are at the moment is this. We've asked questions and we haven't got answers. And that raises serious, serious concerns within, within the executive and, 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 and within Sport Ireland. Yeah, we, know, we all know it raises serious concerns, but my specific question was, do you have confidence in the FAI board? Um, it's a yes or no answer. Well, I'm not saying yes. Take Deputy Coppinger now. Thanks, Chair. Um, welcome to the meeting. And uh, I, uh, my questions, start, the first one relates to uh, your regulatory role. Because there's a slight contradiction in your opening statement where you're, you're at pains to stress that you're not a regulatory uh, body. Um, but yet, the Sports Ireland Act obviously confers considerable authority uh, in Sport Ireland and it's reinforced, you say, in your statement by responsibility in investing substantial amounts of public funding. Um, you say you're there to empower sports organisations to take responsibility for their own performance and to have best practice. Would you agree that amounts to light touch or hands-off regulation? We're there to help and support, and we have a supportive role. Um, uh, our relationship with governing bodies is, is a good one. Uh, we work with them, we support them, and that is the way the vast majority of organisations uh, carry out th their business. On an ongoing basis, there's frequent meetings with all the organisations. We're in tune with what some of the, uh, the issues are and what they're dealing with on an ongoing okay. basis. And in many it, but it's self-regulation? It's self okay. As I said previously, the boards of all the organisations are responsible for the corporate governance of those organisations. I suppose my question would be, um, if you don't regulate the FAI, who does? Well, we need the powers to do that. We don't have the powers within our act to do so. Because uh, it's just members of the public and yeah. the fans who pay the money that, yeah. generally speaking, funds the, most of the FAI's well, activities. Uh, will be entitled to ask who protects, you know, the investment that they make. Well, we, and we protect, it seems to be that Sports Ireland doesn't, but we've, just no. to finish the thing, yeah. we've also been told uh, it's completely voluntary for the FAI to come in here next week. So who, who regulates them? Well, we protect the investment that we make in the FAI. And uh, I've outlined uh, the verification of that uh, countless times. Uh, so that's the piece that we do. And the board of the FEI regulates and oversees the corporate governance of the, organ of the FEI. Well, just on that, right, you do have the power uh, if a, an organisation doesn't tell you that they're in shortfall, they've liquidity yeah. problems, and et cetera. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, at this stage, it would seem to me that they haven't informed you of shortfalls. Yeah. They haven't informed you about a very strange loan. They haven't informed you about the changes that they made to their board. So why have you not actually used the leverage that you do have, as other members have asked, at any point in the last number of years? Uh, we, we use that uh, leverage uh, very infrequent because we don't like to do that. Uh, because, as the chairman says, it does put jobs in jeopardy, put a, a lot of work and programmes that have been built up over the years uh, at risk. Uh, these, these issues have only come to light in the last uh, two or three weeks. We acted immediately in terms of writing a letter to the FEI and the sequence as yeah, of all as, as you've said. So yeah. we're acting on it uh, as quickly as we can and we did act on it immediately. Did you ever think it strange that the CEO of a sporting body would earn more than a Taoiseach, for example? Yeah, they think okay. it's strange. Yeah. Did you ever raise it with them? That's a matter for the board of the FEI, but certainly it is, it is, um, it's... Uh, and in terms of sporting bodies, we're not talking about a particularly successful in recent years sporting body. We're talking about quite a mediocre team in terms of, you know, in terms of yeah. performance. And compared to other sporting organisations, endeavours of recent years, you never thought it strange that he was earning that amount of money? Yes, we did. Okay. Um, can I ask you about the board, although you don't have 
jurisdiction over it. You say about best practice, right? So the best practice, as has been alluded to, is that people wouldn't serve more than, say, two three-year terms, or two to three three-year terms. But even after the recent reform off the back of a review by independent consultants, which you weren't even told about, the FAI directors have been in place more than 10 years, and they'll be staying at least another four years, a number of them. So that's 14 years. Are you going to say anything to them about that? Um, the Community and Voluntary Code um, stipulates what the terms are. Um, if the FEI were keeping uh, with the spirit uh, of the Community and Voluntary Code, uh, I think they might have had, made other decisions. Just on the, the funding, now we know it's about 5%, but actually in your opening statement it amounts to uh, 57 staff being funded yeah. through your, your yeah. the, the funds. Out of, oh, sorry? Yeah. Well, out of yeah. 100 yeah. and... Uh, funded. Funded. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Funded. 33. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's nearly 30% yeah. in, in a sense, right? So it is sig significant, even though the overall funding level is, is low. Um, and you say you're satisfied that they've spent it in, in the ways that they should. Yeah, I, I but yet you say that they've been audited by yourselves on more occasions than any other sporting organisations. Why was that? Did you have concerns before? Uh, it's just the cyclical nature of things. And uh, uh, just to say, Deputy, about 2.3 million of our funding goes to paid staff positions within the FEI. Um, uh, we, we audit the three main field sports on a, uh, on a three-year basis. Uh, and that has, been the, that has been the norm uh, as we're going forward. <coughs> Just on levels of funding that you give to the FAI and other sporting groups, so um, in, in a decade it's about 35 million um, and it was just under 3 million in 2017, the year that they got the uh, cash flow and the loan. It sounds like a lot, but it's only, uh, as we said, 5%. In terms of, uh, why is it lower than it would have been in 2008, for example? because uh, our funding was, was reduced by about 25-27%. Okay, so it's just when you actually look uh, at the, the FAI, I mean in terms of popularity in society, right, the, in your own monitor, uh, soccer would be uh, higher than the GEA, for example, in your own monitor, yet they get less money than the GEA. And I'm just wondering if they too could argue that they've been hit with austerity. Yeah. Uh, after 2008, uh, my first year as uh, chairman of Sport Ire, uh, their sports council at the time, I had to meet with all the three field sports and cut their budget in one year by 30% each of them. It has never been restored to 2008 levels. The FAI at that time were in receipt of approximately four plus million. It's now at 2.565. Uh, so, in a sense, over the last 10 years, they've been at a steady state. Uh, we haven't had the, full, the first year we got an increase in our budget was actually this year. Previously, there was designated funding for sport, uh, for example, the GPA or the women's GPA, or in last year in the context of women in sport in the international soccer team. Uh, they're the biggest. They're the, Okay, we give so them the it, biggest grant, Deputy. Yeah, okay. And the reason we give them the biggest grant is exactly for the reasons you have indicated there. The second reason is <clears> because the sport is heavily involved in areas of urban and rural deprivation. They have a high level of inclusion in sports, uh, and they have a high level of fund uh, requirements <coughs> around uh, clubs that would normally, in a circumstances, not be in salubrious areas uh, yeah. of our cities, towns, or our, our country regions. So we're conscious of that, and a lot of their programs that are specified to us in the documentation we receive in there is around that, in a sense. So Can I just I ask mean, the FEI the... would have a very strong argument with us that we're underfunding soccer in Ireland at that level, and I would have to agree with them. Okay. And they make good use, and I'd have to, irrespective of the corporate issues that we've addressed today, the FEI make extraordinary use of the monies we give to them. And they put a lot of matching funding above and beyond. 
three and four times the funding we put into the programme. So I will have to say that matter in, in their defence as an organisation. Okay. So the, the money that the Sport Ireland gives is for youth grassroots yeah. participation, right? Um, and, but would you agree that it's totally unsatisfactory, that you just have to channel your focus on that? Meanwhile, over there, like the dogs on the street can see, an extremely well-paid CEO, you know, uh, with unknown expenses, which we'll have to ask about next mm. week, but you're aware of this too. Um, so maybe you're putting money in on behalf of the public that could also, if you're in charge of governments, and should be taken from some of these other areas that everybody can see. <coughs> Or do you have any, do you have any right think, to say uh, anything to them about I that? I think, not, notwithstanding what you said there, um, I think we have to disregard that question for now, if that's okay. I've been advised. Why? Uh, well, I'll go into committee if you wish. Okay. Yeah, okay, well, well, it just should be registered that yeah. it just shows how tame the abilities of the Oireachtas is, in, in, that we have to watch what we're, we're asking for here. And Thank you very much, everybody here. Okay. We agreed a procedure before we came in. We agreed a process. And the process is that I have to say when I, uh, that certain questions for no, legal reasons... We, we do, yeah, ask. but we should let but people on, know that's, that. That's yeah. part of the, the yeah. process we agreed. And if you want to challenge it, that's fine. But I have to say as chairman, I just have to say that right now and ask you not to answer that question at this moment in time. That's, and and we, we move to Deputy O'Keefe now. We, you agree, we, we agree the process, but I'm just yeah. saying the public yeah. out there should know how limited the process is. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but it, it's, based, it's based on legal issues, it's based on court, court cases going as far as the Supreme <coughs> Court, it's remit of the committee, and there's due process in here as well. And, okay. and I would love the answer to those questions too, and everybody out there would, but we're not in a legal position to either ask them or to get the answer today, and that's okay. the advice I've been given. Uh, Deputy O'Keefe. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm sure the members from the spot down here today. Um, Australian Chair, um, some previous questions there. Um, when um, the FEI sought to uh, draw down the early grant funding, what did they state in their letters of reason to look for the money to be drawn down? Well, Deputy, the, the, the letters, I suppose, um, requested that we would consider. Um, uh, providing, provide, providing them the facilitating the early drawdown request. I mean, there would have been previous discussions around inquiring about the grant process, the financial cycles, the, the likely time for board decisions. Um, we would have got information on, you know, uh, the, the the program delivery timelines. And I think it's it's fair to say, you know, our preference is is to wait. But as our chief executive has, has outlined, we we work with organisations. We want to maintain the stability of programmes, and we want to make sure that we we, we get the outcomes from a participation and, and development point of view. Um, and if we if we if we can be flexible, we we are flexible, and it is entirely within our procedures to uh, to, to pay those. Uh, grants in advance or, 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 or early. But certainly we weren't, uh, you know, we were given suitable assurances that there, there, there wasn't, uh, you know, any, any, any impending uh, financial issues or anything like that. Right. Um, obviously, you know, um, they do carry a big debt, like, you know, they have to pay down the Aviva Stadium and that. Um, but I suppose what I'm saying is, um, how would it, it has kind of been said here, God, that, um, the dogs of the street said they had cash flow problems. Uh, if that's the case, did you ask them had the cash flow problems in your remit when they were being, when they were being asked for the daily drawdown of the funding? Uh, I, I didn't uh, catch what you said. Sorry, uh, um, Mr. Tracy. Um, what I'm saying is that it's been said here again that the dogs in the street yeah. knew that there was cash flow problems. Yeah. Obviously. It goes along and you had verbal conversations. Would you have mentioned to them, like, you know, have your problems with the cash flow? Well, we would, we, it would be discussed. It would be discussed that uh, uh, they, they have, um, they have, they need the money uh, now um, uh, because they have no match coming up or, or things like that, as I explained in my opening, uh, opening statement. And generally, you see, the, the three main field sports funding comes later in the year. Well, all the other NGBs have got their funding in January, February. Um, uh, the three main field sports, the decisions are not made until, or could be April, May, June. So that's why 
we have a degree of flexibility with them to give them, uh, to give them a, an early 25% uh, uh, drawdown. Right, and you mentioned in your last order, 2018, maybe I'm wrong, Lauren, that for every euro that, you, that the state, through Sport Ireland, gives to the AI, that the AI contribute about four euro. Yeah. How does that compare with the other organisations in the country? Is that a good... Uh, Commitment from the FEI? To yeah, the... It, it is a good commitment from the FEI. Uh, like the other smaller NGBs, uh, the percentage investment would be a lot smaller. A lot smaller. Well, I, I know it's probably but the, in for the, the GA bigger. and the IRFU, it's definitely on a par. Definitely on a par. It's on a par. It right. is on a par, yeah. Right. Um, right, here's the hard one. Um, the last audit, right? Um, in regards to reasonable assurance that you know you mentioned that um, you had one medium priority and two low priority items. Yeah. Given what the reason why we're here today is in regards to um, the hundred thousand pound um, or euro um, loan that was given, right? Um, would that be in this, would that be a high priority item now? Would you as if would it be the, a low a medium priority? How would you rate it? The, this loan situation. Yeah. Um, uh, we've asked questions around around that loan and the circumstances. This is obviously uh, a very high priority uh, question for us, and question for the FEI, and we were we, we await their response. And in the, the current um, form of governments and your audits procedures and that, what has come out at the moment, right? I'll put this way to you. If I walked out to Kildare Street there straight away and walked across the street and I got knocked. It's wrong because I didn't look left and right. But it's not illegal to walk across the street. There's no law that's saying you can't walk across the street yeah. without looking left and right. What I'm asking is, this 100,000 obviously looks politically incorrect, like, you know, for, but was it, does it seem to be illegal at the moment what happened? Uh, I think we, we've asked the circumstances in relation to the loan uh, because uh, we didn't know anything about it. Um, if there was a material deterioration in their finances, we needed to know about it. And if we weren't told about it and there was a material de deterioration, it's a breach of our, our terms and conditions of funding. And finally, through the chair, um, obviously um, the artists go three year cycles and 2019 is the FEI term, right? Um, when were you proposing to go in to do your audit in 2019? Had your date already set? Yeah, we have no date set. We have no date set yet. Um, uh, uh, but probably in the next couple of months, I would imagine. Right. That's all, Chair. Thank you. I my proposal is that after this ten, next 10 minute section, it would break for 20 minutes. And then we'll come back in if people have a second round of questions, if that's sort of to advise you of that. Uh, Senator Fian. Uh, thank you, Chairman. First of all, uh, I'd like to welcome you in here today to answer the questions. I think it's, it's, it's um, the, a lot of the answers that I wanted to ask, uh, or questions I wanted to ask have been answered. I just come at it from a broader point of view, maybe just a discussion, maybe. Um, I was involved in uh, association football 30 years ago. and. You know, it certainly wasn't very well organised at, a, at a, 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 a national level. And I was one of these people that was delighted with the Genesis report was, uh, was brought in and it had to radical over, radically overhaul the FAI governance structures. And I remember John O'Donoghue, the minister, he was quite right. He withdrew funding until the FAI uh, uh, implemented a lot of those key, uh, uh, key fixtures, key, key, key events. Are you satisfied that the Genesis report has been implemented in full in the last 18 years? Well, one of the things the Genesis report called for was independent board members. And um, uh, that is something that we would, in Sport Ireland, would strongly advocate for. Um, any time I see and have the experience of meeting boards and seeing independent uh, people on boards that bring in expertise, it adds real value to boards and something that we would strongly advocate for. Uh, and uh, we would have obviously liked to see that implemented 
um, uh, throughout the whole sports sector because it adds add, add value and uh, it means that you have strong, strong boards, good, good, um, good skills, whether it be legal, financial or whatever it is. And they bring skills that maybe these sporting organisations don't have. So any recommendation, that was, a, that was a strong recommendation to the Jim's report and certainly we would strongly advocate for that as well and we continue to do so. Thank you. Uh, also, you said, and it's highlighted here, uh, over the past decade, the FAI has been audited by Sports Ireland uh, independent audits on more occasions than any sporting organisations. That's, to me, is there a reason for that? Or? Um, no, there was no particular reason. They just, they just have been, and uh, because uh, just, just, the, just, the, just the circumstances. And uh, you're part of Sports Ireland. You have different uh, uh, organisations. You have, I think, Sports New Zealand, Sports Scotland. Yeah. When these problems happen, I'm sure you... Do you ever lift the phone to one of your counterparts and say, we have a problem here, uh, how should we approach it? Or... Um, I, I read a lot of international, international uh, uh, magazines and things like that. Um, there's, e e e uh, there's uh, obviously there's Inside Sport, that, that's an international uh, website, and they, they deal a lot with those type of corporate governance issues and cover them fairly extensively. Uh, and that's something that I follow. Uh, but what I would actually say, and I, I mean this in all sincerity, that in the last five years, that the corporate governance of our sports sector has moved on considerably. It has, definitely. And what I have found and have seen is that the corporate governance around the sports sector in Ireland is far superior than the corporate governance of sports sectors in other countries. And I mean that in all sincerity. Um, and I will also say, and I mean this, is that the corporate governance in some of our national federations are far superior to the international corporate governance in international bodies. So, uh, while we're talking about a corporate governance issue here today and highlighting it, and we're rightly highlighting it, we take it extremely seriously. And that's a good thing. Yeah. And finally, um, look, uh, we've always looked at FIFA and UFA, yeah. you know, over the years, and, you know, um, I don't think corporate governance um, has been uh, uh, the top of their agenda over the years, when, you know. Is the FEI a, a symptom of that? Is it kind of like a, a kind of good fellas kind of club around the world, or is it the same in every, uh, you know, do you have the same issues with world rugby or you know, uh, uh, around, uh, uh, maybe you could comment on maybe UFA and FIFA is, is uh, you know, obviously in the Caucasus and uh, the new uh, states emerging into um, Europe and that, they don't have the same structures. But is the FEI kind of uh, part of that gang? Well, some of, of the, of some of what I would just say is some international sports have good corporate governments and rugby would certainly be one of them. And uh, some of these international bodies are also advocating for good corporate governance and they lay down structures for the national federations. Um, I think it would be well known that, that FIFA wouldn't be leading, leading lights in this particular area. I think it would be fa safe to say uh, our, boxing. Our, our boxing and international boxing organisation either. Right. So uh, I think it's fair to say that... that um, uh, I, I was at um, I was at a, an international workshop, and they were talking about an ethics committee for this organisation, and it was like someone had raised something terrible that they were talking about putting up an ethics committee in place. So, we sometimes there's a long way to go in international sport uh, with, in terms of corporate governance for some of these organisations. Thank you. And just finally, I, I, again, I, I think one thing I, I find it shocking after 17, 18 years of Genesis report that independent board members have not been appointed. And uh, I think it tells the story. There's a story behind that I think we should uh, investigate. But thank you very much. Thank you. Just, 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 just if we can make just a couple of points. We a, no, we're coming back, yeah.
No, sorry. Uh, I thought, I thought no, it was you've already spoken, uh, Deputy or Senator. I, I, I want to be fair to everybody, right? Uh, and I just want to get a couple of questions in, uh, more comments than questions, really. And looking at the... We'll get an opportunity when we come back, will we? Of course, and uh, we'll come back a third time. There's no barrier to anybody, Senator. Uh, truthfully, when I called Senator Fian, I gave him 10 minutes, right? I wasn't aware that, that, that you wanted to come in on those 10 minutes. What you didn't say to me... I wasn't aware of that, and I, you'll still be forced back in if you wish afterwards. But I, I'm, I was, try, uh, yeah. I'm trying to make sure everybody gets a fair uh, hearing. I think I've been particularly, I think there's some very constructive ideas coming out here, and I think on Senator Feehan's commentary there, and on your answers, is the way forward for the future, that whatever happens with this, that, that you need a, a plan, a, a, an actual uh, master plan for change in sport. Sorry, I, I speak for just five minutes. I'm sorry, I'm speaking now. Okay, so I, I look come here. If you want a row, we'll have one. I don't want a row. I want to, I want this to go well. I just want to make a few summary points before we come back in. And the point I'm making is that if you have a plan for proper corporate governance for all of these bodies, which you're, you're, you you don't have the power to insist on, you say in your uh, terms and in, in your actual application, terms and conditions of grant approval, your number one, two, in order to approve funding to an or any organisation, you must be satisfied that appropriate arrangements are in place for the overall governance and management of the organisation. But you don't have the power to do that. You can audit the funding that you give, yeah. but you can't look at the other issues uh, from the point of view of the, your legislative role, as I understand it. So the issue is, how do we make sure that either you get that power or somebody else has it separately? And that's just a question that I was interested in what Senator Fian had was that, what is best practice in other countries? Now, I've been told, I don't know if this is true or not, that the charity regulator in other countries, that if you are applying for a grant to the Sports Ireland equivalent, that the charity regulator vets all of those other issues. In other words, that they have statutory powers to go in and to look and examine and to say, you know, you won't get a certification from us because you're not doing A, B, C and D. And I, I don't know if you could have a view on that, uh, maybe at our next meeting or whatever, but I think what people want to be sure of is that there's absolute certainty that these issues can never rise again, or if and when they do, that, that, you know, that the statutory agency is able to sort them out immediately. And I think that's the core. core. I don't know if you have a view on that or not. Uh, but to me, that's, that's, that's at the core of this. And if the law needs to change, that we do change it. I think that I'll, I'll adjourn, if you wish, now. And, and, and we suspend for, for, for the... But I can think about that, because I think that's... The, I think that's the key to it, that whatever weaknesses there are in the law or in the powers of you or our committee, that we'll have an answer for the future that will be absolute. So let's go to the quarter to six. Yeah, OK, thank you. That the committee will now uh, resume in public session. Now, I just want to point out that... Uh, you know, we, we'll continue on with our questioning. We'll go into our second round of questioning. And if anybody was uh, concerned about uh, issues in relation to judgments that I made earlier, if I upset anybody, uh, it wasn't my intention. But I think we've had a very good meeting, and I think it's been very constructive. Um, so we move now, I think, into the second round. And if we keep the same, the, the same uh, rotation of, of speakers, um, so I just want to make one point uh, to Sports Ireland, if I may, and it may be helpful to the meeting if I do. <coughs> the Sports Ireland Act 2015, page 11, criteria, terms and conditions of assistance as in the legislation, and it's section 11. Uh, Sport Ireland shall establish such criteria, terms and conditions for the provision of assistance in uh, including financial assistance under section 84A as having regard to its functions uh, it considers appropriate and uh, where in Sports Ireland's opinion any person or body that has applied for or received assistance fails to meet any of the applicable criteria, terms or conditions established under subsection 1, Sport Ireland may do one or more of the following. A. Withhold assistance from or refuse to provide assistance to that person or body. B. 
demand a refund of any financial assistance provided under that paragraph to that person or body. And this point, three, Sport Ireland may request any person or body applying for or receiving assistance under Section 84A to supply Sport Ireland with information in such form and at such time as it may require, and B, withhold or refuse such assistance if satisfied that any information so requested is not forthcoming. So that just strengthens the statutory power that you have, apart from what your own terms and conditions are approval. There is actually a stronger base uh, in law for the, uh, for the actions that you are taking than that itself. Okay, so uh, Deputy Murphy. Um, I want to come back to the. Um, I want to just refer to your document that you sent to sent to us last week. Um, it was uh, in respect of governance issues, strategies, and challenges. Um, and on the second page, at the top of the second page, you, you, say, you said that members of the FAI, FAI uh, ratified the introduction of an eight-year term limit uh, for board members, which is at, at a variance with the three-year terms, if you like, but as part of rule changes and to avoid immediate loss of expertise, experience and expertise from the board, it was agreed that any board member who is the chairperson of a standing committee on the national, or, or the National League Executive Committee and who has served more than 10 years on the board may be re-elected for up to four years. Um, and that, that is what you've agreed with um, uh, with the FAI. Um, it's the document that we, we were... We, we got, I presume we got that from Sports Ireland last week. Um, it's, a, it's a department briefing, I think. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Right, so... so Right, okay. Okay. Um, uh, essentially, so that's what was agreed. Um, now, um, the Genesis report was, I, was, was uh, referred to earlier. So, um, and you've talked about the, the need for independence on the board, completely agree with that. Uh, but it's interesting that at the time the Genesis report was um, uh, published, the then F FAI treasurer, uh, John Delaney, uh, said that, that he was quite furious that it was going to take five years to implement some of those things. So he made a very strong commitment at the time that, um, that, that he, he wanted to see that change happening very quickly. So we, then if you look at the, if you look at the, um, the people who are on this, on the board, every one of them are, are chair a standing committee. So the thing about it is that the, 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 the extra four years on top of ten years, and in some cases it's, it's, it's way beyond ten years. There's some people on the board since 2004, 2005, um, which s strikes me as, as a, a, a really significant issue. Um, now, um, the, and I've no doubt that they bring an expertise, and I'm, I'm not... Uh, and I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not disputing that, but turnover is really important and the independence on the board is really important. But it strikes me, and would you have a concern, that maybe one of the ingredients uh, with that kind of, uh, of an arrangement is loyalty. Um, and what you get is you get groupthink in, in, in that kind of, of an environment. And one of the things that we were told that the loss of expertise was a concern but the interesting thing is about expertise, that it's not just at board level that you get expertise, you get it in your staffing as well. And the turnover of staffing at, um, at, at the FAI is, is quite high. There's six of ten senior staff left. There's been four finance directors have left in the last eight or nine years, two commercial directors. There's been four different heads of communications. Uh, and... The, there's a lawyer, a deputy CEO. You know, there's, that's the profile of what, uh, of, of what is happening in an organisation. Would you see that as, a, as an organisation that's functioning well if it has that profile? Um, the, the, the piece around the, um, the governance piece or the board piece, I hadn't seen that. So I think that's just to say that. Um, uh, I, I think what you, I agree with you wholeheartedly that you need expertise on the board, you need to have rotation on the board, um, you need to have some critical pieces that you need on every board, whether it's legal or accounting or whatever it is. 
HR, you need that. And uh, the spirit of the community and voluntary code is about board rotation and uh, people serve the time and they move on after a period of time and someone else comes in and takes their place. And that is the proper way a board should function and it paves the way for new members to come in with bright ideas and new ideas to keep the place regenerated in terms of ideas and what have you. That's good corporate governance. Uh, if people are staying on boards for far too long uh, and uh, it, it, can, it can, as you, or, you, you use the word, loyalty. And uh, there is a point in terms of every board that functions. There is a clear role for the board, and that is to challenge the executive, challenge the management, and, and make them accountable uh, for the actions they take. And, and like the board, uh, the board approves and, and, the, and the management ex execute, and that's the way it should be in every organisation. And uh, if, you have, if you have people on the board too, too long, it can, it can lead to a fudging of that piece in terms of a balance in terms of power. And really and truly, every board needs to have, have a challenging board uh, and, and that sets a high standard, and that is good corporate governance. You've said that the, it's the board's responsibility for corporate governance, and you've said earlier that this is not a good day, and it's never a good day yeah. when sport doesn't end up on the front pages of newspapers for, not, you know, for something other than maybe winning, yeah. you, you know, something big, or, or, and, and that's been the profile over the last number of weeks. But you said something earlier about the, uh, there's one CEO. This split position, yeah. which was unanimously uh, adopted by that board over a very short period of time, having had a uh, very recent sight of, of this report that was done by Jonathan Hall. Have you, have you seen that report? No, I haven't seen yeah. that report. Have you asked for that report? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and I think we're probably going to come back to this uh, at, yeah. at some point when, when, when we have sight of that. But the very fact that that was, um, uh, that was approved seamlessly, um, like there's, there's a, there's a, there's already um, a president and a vice president of the FAI, and the, the vice president is elected by the council, but this executive president role is kind of, it just it happened as a consequence of this Jonathan Hall report, and it was approved unanimously by the board um, at a time when there was a difficulty uh, for, the, uh, for the CEO. It, does it strike you as... As, as, as something that there is a connection with both of those two things, that loyalty may well have played a part with that. We, we don't know what the circumstances behind that report were. We weren't informed about it. Uh, we were informed about uh, what was happening uh, uh, when it was announced, and we read it on the, on the press release. And um, as I said earlier, there can only be one chief executive of any organisation. And, and, and just on that point, uh, uh, is that, is that if, if the FEI are going to recruit a new chief executive, uh, their recruitment in terms of the expertise they get in will depend on that job description. And the job description of the chief executive is responsibility, has the responsibility for all staff within the FEI, paid staff within the FEI. And that's the only way that will work. Yeah. Like it strikes me as, uh, I'm trying to get my head around how, how it would work if you have an, an executive president or vice president sitting on the board with a, a board that has unanimously put that person in that position where does the where does the balance of power with the ceo then fall with a new person coming in and and, and stamping some degree of authority on on on, on an organization would that be an issue in terms of governance um, yes deputy i would feel that uh, i mean it's very hard to find an example where you'd have a joint CEO. Sometimes, my experience in the past is where trade unions amalgamated, you would have for a period a joint general secretary or general president until the integration of the organization. In some um, business organizations, you have an executive chairman and the CEO, etc. But largely, and it's largely in business literature, business management, theory and practice, there is one CEO, chief executive officer, period, in the title itself, who has a reporting function to the board, and as John has indicated, has responsibility for the operation of the organization 
whatever it is, it's, it's very hard to see it. And uh, I, I, we, uh, I mean, our information is, and it's as much information as you have or the public have, because we haven't seen the Jonathan Hall report, is that this post was identified in that report from what we read, and I'd have to say we're reading this at third hand. Uh, we have asked for the report, and we need to get, obtain it, and we haven't obtained it to date. If that report said there was need to be a separation out of the functions, uh, that the chief executive had too many heard, uh, workload, and uh, Mr. Delaney then had been elected to the UEFA executive, and then seemed to have been undertaken, and this role appears from what we read, would be uh, using his position within UEFA and within the FAI to attract to the country um, international competitions in common with Northern Ireland and with Britain and Scotland and Wales uh, FAs uh, and would be using his position within UEFA and with what used to be called the home countries uh, to attract international competition. We don't know. I can only surmise he doesn't have a role in the national game or the national organisation beyond that. But would, would you, would I, I'm at sea a little yeah. bit. Will you need to yourselves. Look, yeah, would you need to see the, 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 the spec, the work spec, or yeah, do you have involved yeah. for the next CEO um, in, in advance of the recruitment? I, I, think it, uh, I, I don't think we have a legal authority to achieve it, but good practice mm -hmm. would suggest, and good governance, that uh, Sport Ireland would be informed of two things. Number one, the spec and if we had any commentary to make on it, given our experience and expertise in the area. And secondly, as to whether we had any role on the, bo on the interview board or any other arrangement. Sometimes we've had that role, sometimes we haven't. Uh, we, we have a conundrum sometimes as to whether it's a good idea to be on a selection board. But certainly, I think our view here would be that that appointment should conform to what is public appointments, uh, systems are uh, proper you know, in board companies and that would follow then the code of practice for the appointment of chief executives. Largely I think that at the moment is a, business, is a British code on corporate governance. But look, the, there are ways of doing this right and it should be done right. Sorry, we have 11 minutes on this section but I know uh, Mr. Uh, John Tracy wishes to say I just want to make two, quick, to two quick points on the point because I think the point is very, very important. We've come across this a uh, number of times where you have a high performance director wanting to report, bypass the chief executive and report directly into the, into, into the board. And essentially the boards of those NGBs would come to us and look for advice. And there's a clear message here, there's only one chief executive. That's very clear, right? That's, that's one, pick, one pick. And the second piece is uh, we have a lot of NGBs that are hiring chief executives on an ongoing basis. And it's normal practice that Sport Ireland nominates someone to that process. We have, <coughs> we have an organisation development unit that gives advice in terms of job descriptions and guidance in terms of the recruitment process. That's all there for organisations that want to avail of those services. And we have people not from the board or from the executive, that we nominate to sit on interview boards with vast experience. Um, I want to go back to the question I was asking earlier on uh, with regard to meetings with the FAI. Uh, and I want to focus in a little bit more specifically. Uh, when did you last meet with the former CEO of the FAI? I met with him, and uh, former chief executive, in December 2000 and, uh, in, in, in 2017. Okay, yeah. okay. And when did you last request a meeting? Um, that was the last time we requested. We, no, it was 2018. I, I apologise. It was 2000. Okay, last so it was, year. The, it was the meeting Mr. Yeah. McGinty referenced earlier, yeah. December. No, no, sorry. No, it was different. It was just also in December. I, I, okay. I would have met okay. my counterpart in relation to the youth field sports programme and related matters. Uh, okay. Solely. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, with regard to the opening statement that you made, you wrote to the FAI on the 19th of March, some days after the report appeared in the Sunday Times. Why such a delay in correspondence, and why did it have to come at the minister's urging? 
It was a bank holiday weekend. I, it's actually a bank holiday weekend, and uh, I, uh, I st story broke on the Sunday. Uh, the letter issued on Tuesday. Okay. And to be quite honest, I, um, we worked it on the bank holiday weekend. So there was a great deal of urgency in terms of Sport Ireland reacting to that. That's, that's uh, Deputy Rock, I also, uh, John had uh, called me about it because I hadn't seen it. And I said, look, we needed to talk to the minister before we acted on it because um, my view was we needed to appraise the minister of the situation if he hadn't aware. But secondly, my view was we needed to act in consort with the minister. Uh, and I have good reasons That's for that because I think uh, where we did act unilaterally previously, I think some ministers took exception to it. Okay. So I just wanted to ensure yep. we were all on the same hymn sheet. Okay. And the opening statement, you all say they are audited, the FAI, more than any other operation. Why, why more? Well, they have, it's just the circumstances, uh, as I said previously, uh, they have been audited. Uh, as I said, it goes around in trees for the three main field sports, so they come around more often. Okay. Of uh, and why did 2016's audit have a broader scope? Was there a, an operational reason well, for Well, we that? just wanted to push the, push the parameters out a little bit further in terms of our funding, and we, and we did that on that particular, particular occasion. And will that be a regular? thing going forward? Well, yeah, yes. Clearly, clearly uh, 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 we have set parameters. Uh, we wanted the wider scope possible that we could look at in terms of our funding. And we, we have done that. And we will continue to do that. In terms of, and I'm, conscious, I'm sharing my time with my colleague, uh, John. So just where am I on time here? Uh, sure. Senator Max. Two minutes left. Oh, just uh, out of 10. And I haven't well, speak. Do you want to, do you want yeah, to two minutes of my own time, I presume, and then I can pass over to Senator O'Reilly. Uh, uh, Deputy, the 2015 Act gave us wider parameters, and I think the Chairman alluded to them earlier than the original Irish Sport Council Act. Okay, and, and that, that accordingly, uh, the, the, the yeah. broader audit reflects yeah. that. Okay. The wider. Well, that makes sense. And then, in terms of the creation of the new role, corporate governance. Um, this might have been asked already, but I just want to ask in a straight way. Uh, do you think this creation of this new role for Mr. Delaney reflects best corporate governance practice? I, I haven't seen any detail in terms of this new role. I haven't seen the job description. Uh, I haven't seen the process in terms of how they came up with it. Uh, I did hear that this morning. <laughs> um, but I haven't seen any detail on this at all. Okay. So it's very hard for me to comment. Of course, yeah. not enough. Well, look, thank you very much. There are how many minutes left? Six. Six minutes left. Okay. Thanks, uh, Chair. Just a few quick questions. You emphasised, both of you, or the three of you, emphasised the importance of independence on the board and fresh thinking and so on. Does present legislation allow for Sport Ireland to have a place on the board of any governing bodies? Is that precluded? Um, it wouldn't be an area that we would go to uh, if, if the governing bodies have independent people on the board. I think that's that's but fine. That's it, enough. Is it? Is it? Is it? Uh, I'm not saying that you would want to. What I'm saying is, would it be allowed under the present legislation? No, not under no. the 2015 Act. Uh, okay. Restricted there, uh, okay. Deputy, in regard okay, to what thanks. our role would be. The, the second question, staffing and contractual arrangements are entirely a matter for the board of the FAI. Would you, you say in your statement. On, on the other hand, then, you said that you, uh, you part paid for 57 part-funded posts within the FAI. So does that mean that you have no governance over that funding, even though it's, it's, it's Sport Ireland funding? Are, are you have no say in the salaries of those people that are employed as a result of your part funding of it? Um, the, those, they're at very much at ground level in terms of implementing programs at national, as, as yeah, I outlined them, I, I, I think. I, I, yeah, I, we don't get into that type of detail with so, the FBI. But, but, uh, just in the context of what has arisen in the last couple of weeks where, you know, some of the, the staff, the unions got involved with some of the staff on the lower levels, yeah. that they had been uh, cut their salaries. It, it, did Sport Ireland's funding for that program, was that cut or was it, was it during those years? Uh, 
Well, the funding was cut after 2008. And yes, but for that particular programme, for, for, for employing, part paying these coaches or yes, education? Yes, so some, of, some, uh, some of the coaching staff and the technical staff were let go. So, that so, so the cut was, was, yeah. Was, yeah. Was, wasn't just the FAI cutting? Yeah. The, it was the funding the you gave them was... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, do you, are you supplied any information on the overall level of salaries? We'll say so many over thirty thousand, so many over forty thousand, so many under hundred. Does that? Do you get any information on that? No. No. Okay. Now, just uh, in relation to a final thing here, just the protocol here, um, in re the relationship that you have, final question, a relationship you have with any of the governing bodies and the FEI included. Um, you know, does a representative from Sport Ireland be invited to all of the internationals? For instance, the Euros were on two years ago. Was there any representative from Sport Ireland there for the period of the of the of the um, tournament? Uh, and was that paid for by the FAI or Sport Ireland? Uh, the reason I asked that is there was speculation in the last week about people on this committee who uh, were invited to a, an FAI function, which I want to put on the record, I didn't uh, accept the invitation next week uh, in advance of the, in advance of the, uh, of the, uh, the draw for whatever under-17 FIFA thing, or I didn't look for or get any tickets at any stage as well. So I just wanted to put my own position. But I, what, what is the protocol? For instance, I mean, I would understand, we'll say, when the Olympics are on, that there will be a representative of Sport Ireland at them and so on. But I, so I'm not trying to yeah. point a finger here. I just want to know, in the context of, does that, would that place any, any difficulty then with governance issues later on? That's, no. that's, the, okay. that's the point I'm getting at. General, general standard uh, is that we would attend home matches uh, with an FAI complimentary ticket. That would be standard. And that would be standard throughout all the, the sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if the Irish international team were playing away uh, in a qualifying for Europe, we certainly wouldn't be going there. If they qualified for a European Championship, usually it would be Kieran and myself would go, but Sport Ireland would pay for it. But the FEI would complement the ticket. We would pay for our own hotel, etc., etc. That would be that would be the height of it. Okay. That's, that's fine. Would just would be the same with rugby or other sports? Or it, it would be the same with rugby. Rugby also pr provide um, tickets for, for home, home matches. Uh, we don't go to, to, if you want to go to, to England like I did last year, we paid for our own ticket and went off and enjoyed the day. Yeah. Now, there's a minute and a half. Just to clarify. Sorry, sorry, minutes, sorry, apologies. Through the Chair, if I may clarify for the Committee that our Code of Governance and Business uh, Conduct has a procedure in relation to that and recognises that it's, it's reasonable um, and I'm happy to send that on to the Committee. Okay, thank, so thank you very much. Another, another minute if you want to go. Do you want to? You have one yeah, minute, just, unfortunately. Just coming yeah. back to, um, to Robert, uh, yeah. I understand, uh, as you said, that the FAI are on the Governance Code adoption journey and I went and looked up the Governance Code, I think 570 organisations such as schools and uh, much smaller organisations are able to uh, credit, get accreditation or be compliant with government code. I really find it hard to believe that a major organisation such as FAI are still on that journey 17 years later or is there a reason? Yeah, there's, there's, um, there's, different, um, there's different standards for different size organisations and for the larger organisations the bar in terms of the compliance with the code would be much higher than for smaller organisations that would have no employees. Yeah. Okay. okay, so uh, deputy try 10 uh, minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just to, to, to go back to one of my previous questions, is, but the reason why I asked about board membership of Sports Ireland and the length of service each board member has, because um, I would expect, as the overarching governing body, to be leading by example, and if you're stipulating that the maximum terms people should be spending is three-year limits with a maximum of two or three terms, nine years, I would expect uh, that you lead by example, uh, and be that whether it's the, the department or whether it's yourselves that make the exemption, uh, I, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's right. John, you, you, you said, well, you didn't say you hadn't confidence, but you, you refused to express confidence quite pointedly 
in the board of the FAI. Is the only reason that you're not taking financial sanctions against the board is because you fear that any financial cuts will hurt the athletes um, rather than um, perhaps the people that we want to, want to, want, want to affect? It's always the last resort, and uh, we don't like doing it. Um, and uh, we'll go through a process. And uh, certainly, we're very disappointed in terms of the letter that we received before we came in here today. And that, was, that reflected my comment, uh, uh, because you don't expect to reply like that. And it was a very important letter that I wrote, and that was a very disappointing answer. Uh, so. If, if you did turn around tomorrow morning and, and cut funding for the FEI, uh, you have a period of, of time where you've given 50% of the funding already this year. You'd be given the rest of the funding by September time, <coughs> August, August, September time. You have, there's, a, there's a little bit of time. But if we did cut funding, you would see ultimately then people being let go of their jobs and programs that have been invested in uh, around the communities uh, would basically uh, cease to exist. That's the tr a tricky piece, and that's the piece that we have to balance. That's the piece that we balance. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Uh, generally, generally, if we're going to cut funding, what we do is we send on our auditors, and if the auditors come back with uh, with really critical issues and verify it for us, that's then the territory that we get into and that's when the board decides. Okay. Um, no one wants to see um, grassroots uh, development positions cut. I think we're all at unison in, in relation, to, relation to that. You said that, though, in terms of what you can do, you're restricted in relation to your powers. Uh, as part of the National Government's Sports Policy 2018, did you request any additional powers so that you could have a greater oversight into the governance of sporting bodies? Um, you do, I, I would always say uh, you don't impose governance. Uh, governance is bought in by the organisations. And that's, that's what we do. And that's why we have our organisation and development unit within Sport Ireland that are, that are proclaiming and talking about governance and setting standards. Um, and that's, that's the only way it would work. It's a spirit within an organisation, within, within a sporting organisation. And the principles, the principles of governance, whether it be leadership, exercising control of the organisation, accountability, transparency, that comes from the top of the organisation itself, not from Sport Ireland. It comes from the top of the organisation, and the top of the organisation itself needs to buy in to the... To, to that, to that, to the, those principles, and if you haven't got that leadership that takes that, takes those principles of the code, if, you're at nothing. To be quite honest. Okay. So, in terms of, if you can't enforce good governance. Um, the simple fact of the matter is, we have a situation where a loan was made, yeah. um, wasn't reported, wasn't declared. We have position created within. 48 hours. Uh, we had a situation where a former CEO mm. was a member of the board and in your own contribution a few minutes ago you said one of the board's jobs is to challenge the management. Yeah. Very hard to challenge somebody that's sitting around the table day in, day out and part of the decision making process. So the governance is an issue there. There's no leadership there. So what can we do to ensure that we have a greater influence and greater control uh, in relation um, to this area. In, in the 2015 Act, you said that that enabled you to be able to do a wider audit in 2016 because the Act widened the scope. But I still come back to the fact that in the high-level review, the following areas were looked into, yeah. and you fail to explicitly say that governance, corporate governance, was looked into as part of the 2016 Act. That, in, in, in your statement, and I think that is, I think that is wrong. 
I think it should have been, it should have been looked into. Um, Mr Mulvey, you said in relation to the, the money spent, the money that you want to spend, when someone asked about more frequent audits, you said that the money spent you wished from Sport Ireland to be spent on sports, sport participation, sport promotion. Um, that, that, that's very important. I look back at um, the 2017 accounts that you published, uh, or your annual, the annual report 2017, and it showed that the year ended 31st December 2017, 700,000 almost was spent on legal fees and conciliary and arbitration payments. In the year ended to 31st of December 2016, almost 2 million of sports funding was spent on legal and arbitration payments. You may not ha be able to supply that today. Well, I can. Yeah. So, yeah. This is a legacy. The, the legal expenses incurred by Sport Ireland are a legacy issue from a previous organisation called the National Campus Development Authority in a legal case involving the Aquatic Centre. That is still ongoing. In fact, it was heard again in the High Court after the plaintiff appealed again. It's been ongoing since 2003, and that ac accounts for the vast bulk of that expenditure. It has nothing to do, if I may respect to say to Sport Ireland, it is an inherited legal case that the new body took over regarding the National Sports Campus that goes back to 2003. And by the way, I would have to say to the Deputy, I brought this to the attention of four successive ministers. My concern about the continuation of this case and what it was costing and my concerns that Sport Ireland shouldn't be obliged to fund this, that it should be funded by the Exchequer directly from the Department, because we never authored or brought this case. So, you know, it's, been, it's one of these, unfortunately, legacy cases, and I, I have to be careful that it's still being heard in the High Court. But that, 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 that's where that arises, that, Deputy. That, that, that accounts for yeah. all of that. There's been yeah. no, no litigation not, not of any my, other nature. Uh, no, I, I, I'd have to look at it, but I don't think so, Deputy. But that's but why, that's if why if I I'm am. wrong on that, I'll correct that record. But we will do, supply that to the committee. I have no problem in doing that, because I think I've, on, on previous occasions. The second issue on, 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 on the corporate governance, and I think we need to be clear here. When the chief executive said, we're not a regulatory authority, we're not the charities regulator that lays down a code and will expect a code. The Companies Act, the 2014 Companies Act, lays down criteria of governance for companies and how they should be run. If there is a problem with the corporate governance of a company, and some sport organisations are company, it's the Office of Corporate Enforcement that has the regulatory investigative function. And one of my concerns is, it's not in the Act, and I don't desire, at the moment, policy may change on this, and may be up for yourselves or the Minister to change this. But what I don't want to do is get into a situation where we, as Sport Ireland, are spending all of our money that is devoted supposedly to the promotion of sports nationally and internationally, that we're in and out of the courts enforcing bodies that other bodies have the regulatory authority to do and may not be doing it. And one of the things that has amazed me in all of this is, and you'll have an opportunity yourself, so, where were the auditors? If the auditors didn't spot this and it was not reported to them, is the appellate body or the investigative body of the chartered accountants of Ireland who have regulatory, are they going to call in the auditors? I mean, we've had this in corporate Ireland for an awful long time. I read an article the other day in the Irish Independent from somebody who sat on the Anglo-Irish board telling us we had light regulation. He happened to be chairman of the Audit and Risk Committee on Anglo-Irish Bank in 2008, and we're paying 29 billion. Okay, but, uh, for that lack of, and he's the cheek. 
the absolute cheek to write in the national newspaper. Sorry, Chairman. Sorry, I was. But you know, can't name anybody here. I know, but I'm just saying. Or make to my, I'm just okay. stuck. It's just a rule. All right. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. your. Okay. Concern. All right. No, but there are other corporate bodies who have this authority, and they should be asked what they are doing. We Possibly, don't yeah. have it. Okay. But if the Oireachtas wishes to give it to us, fine and well. But I, I just asked a question. But that's okay. But, yeah, but Deputy, uh, I, was, I, was, I was unaware of the legal fees. Thank you for clarifying No, no, and them. we will give and you the... I appreciate the, yeah, you're, it, you're it, going to, you're it going is to of further... Concern. It is of concern. Uh, yeah. Just hold a second. I just want to just get to things right in time. Uh, Deputy Coppinger is next, but I appreciate your coming back. Here. Sorry for... No, don't worry. But, it just, you know, <laughs> I understand. So sometimes when your patience runs out of you... It might be worth noting uh, that the department provided the funding for that legal case and it didn't come from Sport Ireland. It didn't come from the sports budget. I think it's worth saying that. Mr Mulvey, you've spent many a night in the Labour Court and your patience, uh, you've been able to exercise a lot of patience. You're only here three hours, so uh, forgive us if we're trying your patience in three I, no, hours. No, you're not. No, I, I wasn't referring uh, to we're going on all night, It's just sometimes you read things and you say, what cloud are they living it's on? It's okay, yeah. No, we appreciate that. Deputy Coppinger. Okay. Then on Shanador Podigo, K. Deoscoele, Cartel Lord. Well, just to say on photo what you just said, uh, if anything comes out of this committee, um, which is why I asked the, the question earlier about if you don't <coughs> regulate the FAI, who does, right? Uh, it is probably the case that it suits some of the politicians here to blame Sport Ireland when questions could have been asked by politicians over the years as well, you know, ministers for sport, etc. However, you, you say you don't impose government at, governance that has to be bought into, but it hasn't been bought into with the FAI. You, you agree with that. But the, so the only sanction you have is the withholding of grant or the withdrawal of grant, right? Would you say you won't use it because staff and grassroots would suffer? But I would put it to you, is it not the case that they might suffer in the short term? But aren't the grassroots and staff suffering over the long term because of the uh, conduct or governance of the FAI board? What I'd say to you, is, is, uh, Deputy, is that we're not there yet. Um, um, we have, we have a process to go through. It has to, obviously, all these things need to be discussed uh, by the board itself. So there is a process. Um, and uh, the big, uh, I suppose, you, I rightly identified the big issue here is around the staff that are employed by the FAI in terms of the funding. It's, it's a critical issue, right? But it's also the investment in those programs over a long period of time. For us, because we've invested uh, hugely in, in these programmes, which I might say are very effective, right? Very effective. That's the, that's the difficulty piece here. Do you not give the FAI board a warning that if they don't do X, Y and Z, well, that you would, would ultimately use the ultimate sanction well, that we you have, have? As you ident rightly identified, we have just two powers there that are very substantially. Uh, they're very substantial. We're reluctant to use them, but we, we, we have have used them in the past. Okay. Um, right, earlier on we, we spoke about the, the CEO of the FAI and what would seem to be an extraordinarily generous wage given the, the status or positioning currently in international terms of the national team, um, plus unknown expenses. Um, but also the manager of the national team. I'd ask you what you think about that because that's disproportionately high in comparison to managers of similar sized national teams. And it was part funded, as you know, by a very wealthy person um, to the tune of 10 million to the FAI over years at a time when other staff would have been having pay cuts. Now, you may not have power to do one, but do, do you not think that you should have asked questions about those issues over the years? Um, I just, just on the just put it like this to you. Um, international soccer man managers are paid a lot of money, right? And that's just the market that they're in. That's the market they're in at any given time. 
um, and uh, the team that, that was in place was very expensive. Um, the team that's in place now, I'm not quite sure they're not in that, 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 same, that same expense. Uh, but again, that's a kind of a matter for the FEI. We don't ever get into that ter territory with them. Uh, they have to respond to marketplace and, and that's what they do. And if you, if you want a quality manager, you have to pay for a quality manager. But you're better off putting that, that question directly to the FEI next week. No, well, we certainly will, yeah. but it's just you do have a certain role of governance of, of sporting bodies, and these very obvious anomalies, obvious yeah, to everybody but in society. We don't get into that um, space. Uh, that's not our, our expertise, and we don't, you know, international managers. Uh, soccer managers, rugby managers, whatever okay. they are, that's well, a matter for the government. The, the funding you give is for young people and grassroots, right? Yeah. Um, now, I'd be aware that, for example, pitch fees have been introduced by a number of councils, like Fingal Council, my own council area, um, which are extremely crippling for a lot of local, you know, yeah. grassroots teams. So, uh, my point is that the FAR, or sorry, the Sporting Ireland are pumping a certain amount of money in, but there's a big hole at the other end of the boat, you know, and would you not have thought at least of asking some questions about that? Um, okay. Uh, we fund positions. Uh, programmes are run by all the organisations. In every sport, in every sport, uh, parents pay fees, affiliation fees, pay for swimming pools, pay for time in swimming pools, pitches and what have you. It's the normal course of sporting organisations running their business. Uh, and that's just a course of, of that, that sports do on an ongoing basis. We've all had children, whether it be in rugby or soccer or whatever, paying their, paying their fees on a weekly basis. And that's just the way sport, the way okay. sport is organised. So the last question, just participation. Yeah. and grassroots being the key focal point. I want to ask you about the women's soccer situation yeah. over the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, as you know, the women's soccer team had to threaten strike action. Yeah. Um, and because of the treatment that they were suffering um, in the sense of shoddy tracksuits, equipment, etc. And downright lack of status. Yeah. But um, in terms of your funding, if you wanted to boost that, so you've given, um, 109, in 2017, Sport Ireland paid 1.6 million to the Gaelic Players Association men, right? And 500,000 to the Gaelic Players Association women. But you only gave 145,000 to women in soccer that year, which is a, a lot less than commensurate with the, with the Gaelic. Um, and you then gave special funding of 195,000 following protests by the players. So do you think that you should have been monitoring that situation a bit more if participation of women in sport should yeah. be one of your goals? Yeah. Uh, well, it, it, it has been uh, in recent years uh, a running issue between us to some degree uh, and, and the government where decisions are made as part of the sports budget that certain organisations get designated mm -hmm. funding. Our view uh, has been in Sport Ireland that that isn't really the best mechanism by which because either sing particular sports are singled out uh, or individual organisations within sports. In the context, our view has been, and we've put it to successive ministers, that we would prefer particularly in the area of women in sport, that a, designate, that a fund is given to Sport Ireland and we make the decisions as to who, when and where it's appropriate to do so. Uh, and we have continued to make that point. And uh, I agree with your deputy in regard to that, that that is important, that we know on the ground, because one of the concerns I think we had is that when we start picking out individual sports, the JAA sometimes is different in that regard, but when we have international teams in cricket, rugby, uh, in the FAI, basketball, hockey, well, the women have equal right to participation as the male team in that regard. And what we felt that singling out individual women's participation in particular sports was discriminatory. 
that the funds should be given to Sport Ireland and we would receive then applications from the national governing bodies in the context largely of the international representation in particular apart from our own indigenous games that there was a case there and that's our view at the moment still now this year the government did make a step in that direction by giving us the one million two million in sport for women and we're we have allocated that uh, in the context of the uh, applications we've got from the NGBs on that. And that really is the way forward, rather than just specifically in a one or two year budget given a particular programme. On the women's FAI international team, when that dispute broke out, and I was very conscious of, of dispute resolution, we appointed Peter McLoon, the former President of Congress and General Secretary of Impact at the time, uh, as, our media, uh, as a mediator. He did mediate a settlement in that, but I certainly, from my own discussions, I feel not all the commitments made arising from that mediation have been fulfilled to date, and it's something we still have to address. So are you asking the FAI about that? Well, we're going to have to ask the FAI. I only talked this morning, in fact, to Peter McLuhan about it as to where he felt it is, and I have to meet and talk with him about it. But uh, my view is, and all my career is, if you make a deal and you make a settlement, you honour it. Because the next time you come to it, your word will not be accepted. So I, I, I wish to assure you, Deputy, that we are actively looking at this and to ensure all our women's teams in all sporting disciplines who have an international uh, commitment that and as best we can with their funds. Just the very last thing, funded. the Office of Corporate Enforcement you say is the only regulatory body for companies like the FAI. Do you think that's appropriate? I mean, Well I would feel if they are a company limited by guarantee and they have big commercial operations then it's the auditor's body who audits them and that audit is appropriate, proper and has been conducted appropriately and no questions arise, and then there's the investigative authorities. And secondly, where there is corporate in any way, and I'm not suggesting there is, I don't know, but if there's corporate malfeasance, that's the office that the state has funded and assigned and given a lot of resources to, to undertake that duty. <laughs> okay, no, I'll only be they're, they're, they're pretty short questions. Um, and I get it, there is a big difference between regulation and governance. Big, big difference. It's a totally different mindset, totally different way you deal with uh, the matter, and I know this from a whole lot of areas, including aviation and uh, Commission for Aviation Regulation and so on. And, and you're right, I fully accept that. And it's important to make that distinction or draw that line in the sand, and that's not your role. Uh, nor, personally, I don't think it should be, but it certainly is not at the moment. I also want to state uh, my own perspective and my awareness of Sports Ireland and people involved in it, a significant level of integrity, openness and calling it as it is. I think it's important to state that and I, I for one appreciate that. Um, I think overall there's a very, very fine job being done, very genuine, very much committed. Um, there is a, a, a separation between Sports Ireland and the governing bodies. They've got a, a, a very particular role, particularly a company limited by guarantee, like the FAI. And if you look at their 2017 accounts, which are the last accounts that were lodged in the company's office, uh, from memory they got a clean audit from the auditors uh, uh, and a very reputable uh, firm. Now, if I may say in relation to the loan by the CEO, my understanding is that that loan was granted and was given in around May and it was repaid in July, August. If that were the situation, and you're, doing, you're looking at the accounts at year end, you ask two questions. One is, was this repaid? And so it's, it's, it's not, may not be a factor from an auditor's. And related to that, the materiality of it. Was it material? Now, on that, the turnover for the FAI for that year was just north of 50 million. 6% uh, of, that, of that 51 or so million 
came from Sports Ireland, <coughs> which is overall it's a significant amount of money, but in relation to 51 million, it's it's not huge. Sports Ireland made a profit of about 2.7 million. They have a net total assets of about 22, 22 and a half million. Uh, I think it actually would be appropriate if, and, and I'd, I'd value again. You already mentioned it, but I'd, I'd value your thoughts again on this. Um, that I don't think that if you did create a sanction of withholding the second part of the payment from the FAI, their finances are well enough that they certainly would be well able to look after the grassroots. Uh, but I know you've got a process to deal to deal with that. But ultimately, that's a factor that makes people kind of sit up and think and reflect. Uh, and I know it's not your style, and it sh neither should it be your style. Another, um, that's in relation to cutting the funding. A question, did you, did you have any, you may have answered this already because I had to leave for a, a little while for another meeting. Did you, have a, did you have any red flags in relation to the FAI over the last couple of years? Was there anything that said, that, oh, we need to kind of look at this? Was there any kind of a sense of a, a start of a domino effect that says we need to look into this? And a third thing in relation to all of this, I actually think this is a, Personally, I think it's a good idea. I think it's something that should happen. Is that um, bodies who are in receipt of reasonably significant state fundings from Sports Ireland or otherwise, they should be compelled to have an independent board governance audit carried out. The Institute of Directors can do that, and there are others who actually go and do that. It's not that expensive, and in my view, it should be done probably at least once every five years. And that should be one of the factors, because when you're, when you're in a situation of granting, you've got fixed criteria in relation to that. But there's a lot more that gets involved in a company or in a business like the FAI outside of that that can actually affect materially the overall benefits of that scenario. So I, I, I suggest there should be some sort of a wider, not regulatory, but governance code. I was surprised to see as uh, Senator Feehan said, 575 companies on, on your website with um, governance code, governance.ie, I think it was, and there's class A, B, and C, and the FAI are class C, but they're not in that. And to me, that would be, that would be a little bit of a flag. So just to get your uh, opinions on that, do I have one more? Um, no, that's primarily it. Thank you. Um, uh, I think we covered a lot of that you earlier, have, I'm sorry uh, it. Senator. Um, yeah, um, we went through, the, the FEI have their own independent auditors that audit them every year. They write a statement to us where they say the money that Sport Ireland provided to them was expended for the purposes in which it was given. Uh, we in turn uh, send in our independent, independent auditors go in. We've had three different companies uh, audit them over the last number of years, and all three have come back and basically uh, have given them a, 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 a clean audit, clean audit yeah. right? And uh, essentially has confirmed that the money that we gave them was expended for the purpose it was given, right? Uh, we had this, you know, this is really kind of where we go in terms of auditing the money that we go, that we fund, and um, so, uh, red flags, um, we, we had a long discussion in here around the salaries and we had a long discussion about this recent report and uh, they are all serious issues that have only come up in, in recent times but uh, certainly um, these are the type of things that we have written to the FEI. We haven't got, we've got another reply today and it wasn't. Mm. Uh, it wasn't comprehensive. So there was nothing before that? There was nothing, no red flag in the past year, two years, three years uh, that's would, come to your attention? We, well, we would know that the, that the FEI um, uh, was always uh, short of cash or, you know, they were all always dealing with liquidity issues or essentially in terms of uh, me uh, just making sure they had enough uh, funding in place for early drawdowns to be looking for funding early. All those type of issues we've We've, we, we dealt with it on an ongoing basis, uh, and they'd be the, the kind of flags that we'd just be keeping an eye on. Okay. So you've been following up on them on an ongoing yeah. basis? Yeah. Okay. okay. And, and just can I, I'm sorry, can I just ask your views, maybe Kieran's view, in relation to uh, considering, from your own governance point of view, 
asking particular organisations who's who you granted over, let's take a figure of a million, million and a half euros, that there is an independent, say, once every five years, board governance audit carried out on them. Would you, would you have a view on that? Uh, yeah. We undertake that largely at the moment in our learning programme and development programme with them. Uh, I think one of the uh, issues, uh, Senator, about sporting organisations at the moment, and, and, and you know, given the pr proliferation between size, income stream, participation, national participation, it's a wide church. Mm. But I, I think there are principles that apply irrespective of size. And you're quite right around having good, robust uh, internal governance. And that means bringing on the board in turn people who have nothing to do with the organisation, okay. uh, who have, and I think our chief executive referred to earlier, who have legal expertise, who have financial expertise, who have marketing or commercial expertise. The problem with some sporting organisations is that they're in that transition from what was self-regulated volunteer organisations of people who were participating in the sport over a long period of time, were volunteers in the sport, were parents who had children involved in the sport. We have to now move beyond that, that we're getting into bigger financial space, we're getting into bigger participation space. But it's not just that, it's around issues, not just of good governance, but child safety, child protection, yeah. <coughs> health and safety, uh, vetting. Like we, we have to undertake and discharge all of these functions apart from doing that because it's also to maintain both the professional input at executive level and high performance level, but not leave volunteers and people who we need in sport every day of the week and not say to them, you're not good enough to be on a board, you should be on the board. I mean, the Special Olympics, Paralympics, uh, Community Games, all of these organisations, and you will hear it, the length and breadth of the community, they cannot survive without volunteers. Absolutely. And we need to be careful in governance that we don't exclude them from the centrality of policy, decision-making and governance. They're vitally important, <coughs> allied to expertise. We're struggling as a country generally around corporate governance. We've been through pretty bad experiences in the charitable sector. We haven't had many, thankfully, in the sports sector. There are other areas of state agencies that have come in, the private sector. But, you know, we're moving on. We're grappling with the issue of corporate governance. We're not the only country in the world that has difficulties with this. But it's a moving, it's a moving part here. And we have to get to a state where we're confident that the rules, the laws, the regulations, the statutory instruments, and the voluntary codes, that they're adhered not alone in spirit, but in actuality. And that's an educational exercise, that's a supervisory exercise. And it's not that one size fits all, but we as a body, as Sport Ireland, and we do it regularly, we call them in to make their presentations to us about their policy and plans. But it's incumbent on John and myself and other members of the board that we meet the chief executives, the high performance directors, the volunteers, go to their functions, go to their events. It's not all going to the internationals. Mm. You need to be there to talk to them, to be there to present their awards, to assist them in, in giving the kind of policy direction that we need to, and then to thank them for what they do, congratulate them for what they do, and the great achievements, because the, the story of Irish sport is an extraordinary story. As John alluded to earlier, last year we won more medals internationally than we ever did before in the multiplicity of sports. It's not in boxing anymore, it's in sports we never even heard of. We've had our Special Olympians acquit themselves extraordinarily well. Uh, you know, they're ambassadors for the Paralympics as well. We will have Olympians going to Tokyo and we hope to have the biggest team ever, but we have to make sure they're nurtured, they're minded, they're supported, and they're funded. And behind all of them are boards, high departments, development officers. We have a series around the country of local sports partnerships, the length and breadth of the country, the amount of work they do. We also do dormant funding, which you, as, as a committee and the government, have gladly given to us and we, to ensure, as I saw it last night because of my own work in the inner city in Dublin, 
women out playing under floodlights soccer in Sheriff Street. This is what we need to do. We have to make sure that happens around the country and they have the best of facilities and that they get as much as we can provide. We've had 10 lean years of funding for sport. Thankfully, that's changed last year, and I hope it will change more, and that our athletes need it at a time when, you know, we can't be asking, as, as, as um, Deputy Coppinger said there, I mean, I don't think people who use pitches should be asked for fees. They're supplied by the state. And councils, yeah. You know, well, look, I, I must say, Fingal County Council, and I'd say it, Ruth, to your chief executive and to your council, have been very good to support Ireland. Very cooperative and assistant to us because our campus is based within your planning area, and you've been very helpful to us, and I hope that continues, and I want to say that. But, I mean, I, I do feel, you know, the only way we're going to bring sport to a level we need to do it is to move on all fronts. I think and incidents like this set us back. Yeah, but I think, I think we can learn from them too, and I think that's what we have to yeah. do now. Uh, Deputy O'Keefe. Yeah, yeah, Chair, um, one question is, um, has Sport Ireland itself, prior to the last couple of weeks, received complaints from uh, associates of the FEI? Have, have, had you received complaints about issues in the FEI before the last couple of weeks? Okay. Um, in regards to the spending and the good value for money, um, obviously, like you know, everybody's waiting for the budget every year. Like you know, what's going to be the allocation into the, um, into the, for example, the sport and what your part will be, right? When the likes of the FEI make a submission for the forthcoming year, grant aid money, how? How above or below that in regards request? You know, everybody has open hands before the budget, looking for millions, like, you know, and be any organisation, like the health service, where they can look up, hopefully get more money than what might be there on the budget day. Are they fairly good in regards to their request, like, you know, um, to, to keep the show going? Like, you know, what I'm trying to say, like, is, um, do they, for example, was it last year you gave them 2.7 million, well, give or take? Did they look for 3.5 billion? You know, do, do they go way above the. Uh, requests for the one for the question, like, you know, uh, do they keep it in, um, are they understandable? Like? I can assure you, Deputy, uh, all the sporting organisations, big and large, all look for more money than uh, uh, they get. And that's one thing, they're very strong in their advocacy uh, around this. Uh, they do it through Sport Ireland and their submissions and our submission to the government, but they also go in and meet the, the ministers are well, our government. But that's, that, that, that's the way things are done. But I would have to say this year, uh, Sport Ireland, when we went in to uh, meet uh, the minister on this, the ministers, uh, we also had a good hearing with the Minister of Finance. The Taoiseach was a former minister for sport, and we had a good hearing there. And members of the opposition we met gave us a good hearing, and I felt for the first time we were beginning to make substantive inroads in increasing for sports all around. So the one thing the sport organisations, particularly the main field sports, they're great advocates for their sport, but they, they have a lot of clout outside of Sport Ireland as well. Can I maybe uh, just add one thing, because I think it's very important that I say this, that um, we now have a, a new policy for sport, right? Mm -hmm. But with that policy for sport, we have funding and a commitment by government to increase and double the, the budget for sport. Uh, and I just want to pay tribute to the colleagues inside the department that have worked so hard uh, and pay tribute to them because civil servants have worked hard to ensure that they made a case right across all the various, various government departments and they made the case for sport along with the ministers and everyone have bought into this and everyone is aligned right in terms of the need and the importance of funding for sport so i think that's an important piece that we're all aligned in terms of the requirements the budget for sport to increase it and i want to pay tribute to to ministers and the civil servants for the doing the work the and members of the europeans that have worked so hard to make that happen well see chair what i'm asking is um we see for example there was a special education for the ladies uh, uh, the part of the 
the sports, right, in, in the FAI, like there was a special allocation, like, you know, why does that arise, like, you know, shouldn't the FAI themselves have included in their own overall um, application, like, you know, why is, that why is that happening, did they have to get extraordinary, separate funding, like, you know, have the, have the FAI their finger on the pulse, like, in regards to the development of the, the ladies section of the, the football or soccer? Well, they did advocate to us, Deputy. I, I, I dealt with yeah, this earlier, but they did ad advocate to us, and we did include it in our submission to the Minister. Uh, and the Minister yes. made a special allocation last year in regard to this. Our view, and I said it earlier, our, our view is we'd prefer women in sport would come through our programmes and we would deal directly with the sporting organisations, but sometimes there's a real politique around these things. But I'm always conscious that there are women's teams participating internationally in different sports and they don't have the same clout and we need to advocate on their behalf. No. Yeah, I, think, I think we're approaching the end. Uh, I just want to, if I can, just before, we, just, uh, what would the committee like to do now? Do we want to... Yeah, have some more questions. Some more yeah. questions. Okay, fair enough. Okay, um, just before we go into that then, um, I was just, we have correspondence to deal with at the end of the meeting. I was going to pose we deal with it tomorrow, if you agree with that, that we don't take it. Right, so, uh, so we'll start another round of questions, that's fine. Oh, the witnesses would like a break, are they happy enough? No. Oh, right. Okay, we'll start again then. Uh, what, what, what time do you think you'd need this time? Five, or five be enough? Pardon? You want ten minutes? Okay, all right. Fair it's very, very little time. No problem. Um, just, just to come back to the, um, uh, the, the, the corporate governance and the thing I, I read out from the minister, I hadn't realised, or the department, uh, I didn't realise that that's where it came from. Um, but would you be happy with, uh, would you be happy with, uh, or would you, uh, would, do you agree that that is what has been agreed with the, uh, the FAI in relation to uh, the terms uh, for the, the rotation of the board, um, that it is, um, let me see, that it was agreed that any board member who is chairperson of a standing committee of the Nation, National League Executive Committee or who has served more than 10 years um, may be re-elected for up to four years. Have you agreed that? We haven't agreed it. Okay, um, that, that's fine, because I, I think in 20, 2017, when we had the minister in here, um, I asked him about the independent people on the board and he said that he was actually going to look at um, doing something about that at that point. Clearly that hasn't happened. Um, that hasn't ha happened up to now. But are, are, have you ongoing engagement with the FAI in relation to the, the rotation of the board? Uh, they set up their own group within, within the FAI to look at corporate governance. Um, um, they're as I said, boards of, of federations are responsible for the governance. They've gone about uh, their business in terms of compliant, compliant with the code. We, our plan of action is, is we will uh, we'll do some audits in terms of when everyone has crossed the line in terms of how, the, how they are in terms of compliance with the okay. code. Right. But there's a, there's a long way to go yet in terms of, okay. in terms of that. Okay. Um, Deputy, just by way... Yeah. We weren't involved in that process no, no, at I understand. all, yeah, yeah. and you know, yeah. we weren't asked. Yeah, um, in, it, it may well be in our interest to actually have the minister in at some point because he has given a commitment in relation to that. So that might be something we we, we come back to, poss possibly tomorrow. Um, just uh, in relation to the loan, um, uh, one of the issues that I would ask you to particularly look at is that um, the loan was given at a particular time in the year and then we were told that uh, it was paid following the submission of an invoice. Now an invoice is for a service as opposed to, uh, as opposed to a loan. I'll just ask you when you're, when you're looking at the response that you will maybe consider that particular issue because that just stood out for me as something uh, fairly strange. Um, 
The, the other aspect I wanted to, uh, I wanted to cover, and you've, you've, you've included in your open, opening statement under the audit of 2016, you identified a number of things, the board, board and the committee structure, financial management, whistleblowing, code of conduct. Um, whistleblowing is a particular one, or the lack of it, um, uh, and uh, essentially I've had lots of people talk to me um, over months now in relation to, in relation to the FAI. And it, it, there, is a, there is an issue that repeatedly comes up, and that is that people feel that there is a consequence for them if they raise issues um, for their individual club, maybe losing out on a grant, or, or people who have worked or are working in, in the FAI. Would you have engagement with the FAI with something like that in, in, in relation to something uh, like that, or any other sporting organisations? Are you, for example, uh, in relation to the whistleblowing legislation, are you uh, a, a, an organisation that people can, uh, can make a complaint to? Um, uh, you know, and particularly if it's um, it's partic particularly um, uh, in relation to um, people who work in an organisation. Yeah. No, it's up to every organisation to have their own whistleblowing policy in place, uh, clearly set out that people know exactly where they have to go if they have a have a complaint. Right. We're we're not a central body for sporting organisations. That right. is not our role. Okay, um, and can I ask Callum? you? Just, just, Debbie, just to add to that, and as, as part of our internal audit programme, when yeah. our internal auditors go in and audit the governing bodies of sport or local sports partnership, they would look for the existence of whistleblowing policies, and occasionally it would come up in a finding that a whistleblowing policy may not be in existence, and it would be a recommendation from that particular audit, and that would be monitored by uh, the executive within and sport. And can you audit. recall if there was one um, in 2016 when that well, was one of the headings? Well, uh, the... Um, the scope of the review included a review of the whistleblowing policies and incident management procedures and, and nothing of significance arose or was reported to us by the auditors on that occasion. Yeah, I mean, it may well be that people are fearful as well in some organisations, um, because it, particularly smaller organisations where people have to continue working um, and, and if they have concerns. It, I'll maybe address that to the FAI themselves uh, in themselves next week. Um, in relation to, um, uh, would you be made aware, for example, if there is any abnormal payouts for things like, for example, where there, where there has been maybe court activity, where there's been harassment or, 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 or anything like that, would that be something that would be brought to your attention or should it be brought to your attention for this organisation or for any other organisation? No, not normally. The, those type of things might, wouldn't be brought to our attention unless the organisation was in, uh, had substantial financial issues. So it would be only in the financial area? Generally, yes. Generally, yes. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure, Deputy, but uh, when, I, when I was head of the Workplace Relations Commission, I think, and it might have occurred in one or two sporting organisations, but I, I can't recall, but I know some claims came in through the adjudication service that involved sporting organisations, but it may have, I, I can't recall the incidents, but I think there may have been two or three from different, but I, I, I wouldn't have been adjudicating on them or I wouldn't have had that role, but I think one or two sporting organisations may have had issues. Okay. Um, because, I mean, that will tell you something about the health of an organisation as well. I think we're only, we're only, um, but it's, it's just if there were, for example, um, if there were substantial financial implications where you were ending up in court or something like that, would that not be something that they would need to tell you about? Because there's a reputational risk yeah, here. Yeah, they would, and they generally do if there's an issue like that, that if they're in court or they would come and, and talk to us and chat us, uh, chat us through it. Yes, that happens. Okay, and there's nothing that has been drawn to, to your attention in relation to the FAI? In no, relation not to in that. recent times, no. Right, okay. I think I'm nearly done at this stage. Yeah. Um, just to go back to the staff turnover, um, would that be the kind of, I mean, it's very high level, 
the, the, the amount of, of, of turnover in terms of in terms of the functioning of an organisation. Like uh, reading a, a newspaper article, pe people were complaining about things like internal relationships. You know, not not being able to talk to the same person kind of repeatedly, the lack of continuity and things like that. Is that something that uh, mm -hmm. you, you get into any dialogue in, in terms of the, the health of a, of an association? Because it does seem extraordinarily high, right. the, the turnover, yeah. particularly well, it, senior people. Again, that's back to the board of the, of the organisation right. and okay. the chief executive of the organisation. Uh, we, we would be aware that uh, it does, the way you outline it, that there's, 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 there's a pretty high churn uh, of staff. But a number of the staff we know would have ended up with other sports organisations mm -hmm. taken up either key posts in other organisations. So there might be a mix here between dissatisfaction with the way they were treated or the, with their pay against other people who are seeking promotion. Mm. But, you know, it, it is a high turnover. Right. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Yes. Uh, any other? De Deputy Troy, did you want to come in? Okay. Um, thanks very much, um, Chairperson. I suppose, I'm just going to go back uh, again, I suppose, to the issue in terms of how Sports Ireland has dealt with the FAI because, you know, there has been issues in other sporting organisations in the past, uh, most recently the OCI, uh, the IABA, uh, Basketball Ireland, uh, Swim Ireland, and all at some stage have had their funding cut or, or suspended, maybe it might be the better, better word, or threat of it at least. Um, and I just feel that, maybe I'm wrong, but I just feel that there's not the same level uh, and a consistency in approach in terms to how uh, the various sporting bodies are being dealt with. Um, and if that is the case, is it not sending out the wrong message in terms of... Because, quite frankly, the manner in which they've treated you in the last fortnight with their letters, um, their decisions, with no consultation in terms of the new position, their letters, their... their uh, original letter, which is not answering your question, the most recent letter, which is basically um, arriving at the 11th hour, they're not actually responding to your requests or um, your concerns in any way of a satisfactory manner, which you allude to, which you, you confirm yourself. And I just think there's a, an inconsistency in the approach being taken by yourselves uh, Deputy, it's, that's a little unfair because what I would say here is this. Generally, generally when, we, when we get to the point of pulling the trigger with regards to suspension of funding or withholding funding, there's a process. And we go through a process. Right? We're asking questions. We haven't got answers. And I agree with you. It's, what we've got today is totally inadequate. And we'll be writing to the FEI along those lines tomorrow. The board, it's the board of Sport Ireland that makes those decisions. We're meeting next week, obviously all these things will be considered, but we need to go through a process. And it's only fair that we go through that process. Uh, Any other questions? Uh, yeah. Um, you, you, in, your, in your opening statement, you quite rightly referred to the fact that contractual arrangements is not your responsibility. Um, and you refer to commentary recently in relation to uh, rental payments. I suppose what I would say is, while it may not be your responsibility per se, um, there is a great concern out there that when you read stories of our international women's team changing in uh, airport toilets, when you read stories of those people uh, having to share tracksuits, you made a special once-off payment in 2018 yourself uh, towards the women's national team of 195,000. While the rental and contractual arrangements mightn't be your direct responsibility, there's a concern that those monies being spent is diverting necessary funding away from an organisation 
and actually relying more on Sport Ireland and preventing your funding uh, being put uh, to, the, to, to, to better use? Um, we, uh, there's an issue around transparency, as I would see it, uh, and all those type of issues should be absolutely uh, transparent. Right. Uh, the funding, as just to say, that we put into the organisation, we put in a euro, FEI puts in four euro. Uh, but anything to do uh, with uh, CEO salaries and, 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 and rental agreements, that should all be, be transparent so everyone actually can see it. That is good corporate governance. And I just finally say, and I'm... We're just trying to we acknowledge all the and you mentioned Mr Mulvey in relation to the notable sporting achievements over the last 12 months we all acknowledge that what we're here today is trying to um, get to the bottom of issues in terms of how we can improve even further and you we said you've come a long way but we've had many of a, a scandal and an issue in our sporting bodies over the last number of years and despite that there still is governance issues in other bodies so nobody is even realising when you see one being caught out, we better get our act in order. There's someone is watching over us. There continues to be um, issues out there. You have an audit and risk committee, and this committee comprises, just according to your own um, report, uh, this committee comprises of two board members, uh, two independent members. And the role of the audit and risk committee is to support the board in relation to its responsibilities for such issues of risk, control, governance and associated assurance. So the role of your committee, according to your own report, report is governance too. And I suppose, can I ask in relation to the membership of that committee, in terms of the independent, the two independent members. Is one of those independent members a former board member of Sports Ireland? And is the second member a member of uh, the Department of Justice? Okay. So would you feel that the two independent individuals, one having previously served on Sports Ireland board uh, would meet the definition of independent? Um, they're very good audit meeting uh, people on the... On I the don't know meeting. one of them personally. Pardon? I don't know any... It's not personal. Yeah. I don't know anybody. Yeah. There's, um, the, the, the committee is made up mainly board members, mainly board members, and the oversight of governance is within our own organisation as well. And uh, we have rigorous processes around any, all of our funding. Uh, we deal with risk uh, and do it at a very high level in terms of all the different units. Uh, we have uh, various uh, senior managers reporting in to that audit committee on a very regular basis, providing their risk pro profile uh, right across the various programmes that they operate. Uh, and obviously they handle any issues around whatever CNAG comes up with. Uh, financial statements are approved by them. Uh, and the right expertise is on that audit committee. Uh, but, and it's but, a very good audit committee. But the question I ask specifically, and um, yep, you would imagine the person from um, the Department of Justice works in internal audit in that department, I believe, would have the right expertise. But just in relation to the requirement that two independent, two members of that board should be independent individuals, mm -hmm. do you consider that somebody take, coming off Sports Ireland, going on to a subcommittee of the board, would in fact meet that requirement or that definition of independence? Uh, certainly they're uh, very um, they, they would why wouldn't they they're not on the board anymore mm. I think there's also a point here, if I may come in deputy in terms of there has been uh, rotation on our audit and risk committee there's <coughs> excuse me two new members added in the last in the last year or so um, um, 
the member, an external member, at it the, the year before that from the Department of Justice. And as well as that, the, the Audit and Risk Committee reviews its effectiveness on an annual basis. And uh, you know, previous reviews would have identified certain gaps on that, and those gaps have been have been filled. And I think that's 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 appropriate in terms of additional expertise. And um, you know, we've seen we've seen the appointment of, of a board member uh, late last year onto our audit committee with specific experience in financial matters, auditing, etc. Yeah. Okay. Um, and just finally, um, sorry, Robert. Just before we go on, I just want to try and get a. Uh, what time should we finish at? Just to, to sort of be, say we we'll have seven too soon. Oh no, no, not. There's nobody been rushed there. That's on it. So we say if we, we finish at half seven, that's in fifteen. Is that okay? Because our witnesses have been here. And if I, I just ask one final question, and it's back to a question I asked at the outset, or the initial question in, in relation to Mr. Mulvey, uh, to his role uh, on the previous Sports Council board. Um, did anyone ever raise with you at board level um, their concerns around uh, irregularities uh, on or in the FAI? Um, you said no. You said you knew what I was thinking. Um, I, don't, I, I have no reason to ask that question. Um, I was just asking the question in relation to the previous board and this board. Perhaps you might tell me what I was thinking. That would be for Deputy. Uh, I don't think I'd be able to uh, do that for you, but what I do say is no, I have had no issue raised regarding the FAI exclusively. Neither Sports Ireland or the previous no. board? No. Question. Um, sorry, Deputy Carpenter, are we finishing around? You, really? you mentioned, or both of you mentioned, or three of you mentioned, I think, um, in relation to governance and your, your overseeing of governance, that it's a lot easier when there's buy-in from the governing body. I think that the good example of that that we've seen in recent years has been the Olympic Council of Ireland. And I think that I'd like your comments on that because... Uh, I, there, there was a lot of difficulties, uh, there was a lot of issues, and basically there was a new broom, and new people went in, total clean out, if you like, for, for the want of a better word, and it seems to have worked exceptionally well. Would, be that, would that be your view, and would that be a good model for other governing bodies that are in difficulties? Um, without a shadow of a doubt, um, uh, the leadership of the Olympic Federation has been excellent. Um, they were in here with ourselves uh, uh, some time ago now, uh, but the organisation is, is unrecognisable. They have a very good chief executive. They've appointed some <coughs> very good people to lead the team in Tokyo. Uh, there is a real alignment between ourselves, Institute, and Sport Ireland and the Olympic Federation. We're all on the same team now. We're all wearing the same jersey, uh, which is really good news. And there's real leadership, real leadership coming from the Olympic Federation. And uh, an important piece for us as well is they're now making inroads with the corporate sector and getting sponsors on board. And that's really, really important. Uh, so it's, it's very good news. And it really is a reflection, as I said, at my, it's about leadership, and that's leadership. We have, Deputy, a service level agreement with the Olympic Federation of Ireland, which incorporates the services of um, Sport Ireland and the Institute of Sport within Sport Ireland. So uh, that's very cooperative. We've cooperated around the arrangements for Tokyo, the camp, and the joint engagement on that. And uh, no, things are, are looking well, and... Last week they announced uh, their kit sponsor added us. So that's, things are moving in the right direction. We have to make sure now we have the athletes. There is some good news around sport. Oh, there is. Look, Mayo won at the weekend too. Deputy Commissioner, followed by Senator Ah, well. And Deputy O'Keefe. Okay, yeah, ju just a few quick last ones. Um, yeah, so not only was the F... Sorry, I keep saying the FAI Sport Ireland, not informed of the loan by the FAI 
Um, in your opening statement, you said that Sport Ireland's financial controller raised a query with the FAI in relation to their liquidity in 2017 as part of the mid-year yeah. review. So it isn't just that they didn't inform yourselves of the extraordinary <coughs> loan. They actually actively concealed it. Would you agree? Uh, well, they asked, we asked a, sp a specific question and they came back and answered it a specific answer. Um, uh, you're right in terms of, uh, in terms of um, transparency. And, uh, but we asked a specific question and they came back with a specific reply. Yeah, because like if somebody doesn't tell you something, that's one thing. But if you actually ask them and they don't tell you, that's another thing. So what do you mean by that? Well, it, it, I, mean, I mean that we asked a specific question, they came back with a specific require. A reply. Uh, if you probably look at it now with hindsight, you'd be looking at it a bit, bit, bit different. The thing is, my, 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 point, my, my point is, are we talking about in terms of governance and a company, right? Are you talking about something criminal then? Like that you asked and they actually concealed. It's very vague what you're saying to us here. Just have to put the word criminal. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, I, well, uh, yeah. I'm being, careful, I'm right. being careful as well in terms of my reply to you, right? Um, um, and I think really, before we pass judgment, we need to get a proper reply for the FEI. Um, uh, this is about something some time earlier, isn't it? We'll go back to our terms, and re our terms of reference. Okay. So anyway, could I just clarify this? You, you said that you forwarded the €100,000 loan matter to the Office of the Director of Corporate Enforcement. Or sorry, the FAI has done that, yeah, right? Yeah, the FAI has done um, that. According to the Sunday Business Post, there's been one other complaint relating to the FAI that's been forwarded to the same uh, ODC. Yeah. yeah. So um, do you know anything about that? No. You know nothing about that? No, nothing about that. These would seem to be quite serious, you know, breaches of governance. Would you agree, in line with earlier question, that really the board should resign at this point? Well, what we know about at the moment is the loan, right? We've asked questions, right? You have the FEI coming in next week. You can put those questions to the FEI next week, and I strongly suggest you do that. We've put questions to the FEI this week. We hopefully will get an answer by Monday. Monday evening, and that's what, that's the timeline that we will put on it, and we might be further sure, further sure, light. Sure, yes, sir. Yeah, chair, chair, whatever reply we get. With the well, that's fair enough. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Sorry, Deputy O'Keefe. Now, I just want to make sure everybody we finish in eight. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, to kind of and, and uh, my the previous question, I can just clear the air here, not chair. The last audit that uh, that uh, Sports Ireland conducted was 2016. Okay. So it is on foot of. The accounts the FAI submitted to you yeah. that your that your audit team raised the issue of the liquidity in this. Yes. Yes. In other words, no. they weren't hiding. No, it was it was when they send in our accounts to us, our financial director looks at, at the accounts. Yes. And he raised the query when he saw the saw them. Correct. In in other words, that their accounts were such a way that you could see there was a problem. We we had a question to ask. Correct. Yeah, yes. And we asked yes. It. it wasn't that you went in. And found no, 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 right. No. So the FBI gave you the accounts. Yes. And he found the, the flaw. Had they, their, had they got their accounts qualified at the, in those submission? Were they yeah. qualified? Qualified. You know, an order qualifies the accounts. They, 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 were, they, were, they were audited and they were signed off on a going, they, on were, a going concern basis. On a going concern. So it was up there on the public display, so. It was. Yeah, they, 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 well, at that stage, they hadn't been released to the. Uh, if I, if I recall correctly, they, they hadn't been released to the AGM at that stage. Oh, you know, I, just, I know. It was just but, but, but prior what to you that. got from them? Yeah. It was, it was, it was a full yeah. financial statement for 2017 oh. that we would have got uh, around the middle of last year. Or, which, or raised around, the which raised the concern and your, your accountants picked up on it. Yeah, well, it, yes, raised, it, raised, it raised the question, yeah. Yes. And, okay, and, thanks. And it was responded to. Senator Feehan, a question there. Yeah, I suppose on a lighter note, it's, uh, it's great that we only heard of the Olympic Council of Ireland for the first time in a year and a half, uh, it's, um, 
It was always been spe Federation, of Federation. <laughs> sorry, 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 Federation of Ireland. Yeah, it was always, um, it was always. Uh, anytime we heard it, it was always controversial. So it's, it's, uh, it's nice to hear that it's going so well. Just uh, you, you mentioned about the FAI and I suppose it's international football as well, that they had a liquidity problem, and um, that there was problems sometimes with finances. Is that the same amongst most federations or most, let's say, the Welsh or the FA? I know they had a huge building project, but and I understand they didn't get into uh, uh, major tournaments. But I would have thought with sponsorship, um, the fact that we're going now for nearly 30 years uh, getting in and out of tournaments, um, I, I wouldn't have thought that should have been a huge issue. Or is that an issue amongst uh, most football associations? Well, we talk, it's a t cash flow issue that they have, and it relates really to they have a debt that they have to make repayments on, on around the Viva Stadium. stadium. So that's, what the, that's a big issue for them. So they can run into cash flow problems or issues if they have no match. Non-qualification. Non-qualification or things like that. Yeah. So that's when it arises. Uh, I think the very, <laughs> a lot of our governing bodies... Uh, um, they work on a t very tight budget. Let's, let's, let's face it. Uh, they don't have commercial interest, uh, commercial income. They don't have any gave receipts. T and to a large d degree, they depend very heavily on our, our funding. So they are always kind of very tight in terms of, in terms of funding. We've been encouraging all of them, if they have a debt in a, in a given year, to start reducing that debt because you don't want the building up. Uh, and in fact, what we try to do is encourage them to have a little bit in reserve, so they can continue uh, for a little bit in reserve going into every year. And that's really kind of a model going forward. Can I just, can I just find it really, really strange that the FAI had turnover in excess of 50 million euro, profits of 2.7, reserves, or I would call it net total assets of 22 plus million, and yet they had cash flow problems that I couldn't talk to their bank about getting a bank overdraft or even restructuring their finance in some way or other after being that financially successful. It's just, I think it's astounding. It's just a comment. I just can't, can't get it as an accountant. I think, can I, can I just say that I think if we, we have three minutes to go and uh, I just want to thank our witnesses, uh, John, Kieran and Colin for their I think for their honesty, the integrity of their work and their commitment to sport is very clear to everybody. I think the weakness of the law is also exceptionally clear. And what we need to do as a, as a state or as a government or as an Oireachtas to ensure greater accountability from, from bodies like, like the FAI if, if the legislation isn't strong enough to get the answers that we want. So I would think uh, as if we would, we're going to meet again tomorrow morning and I think we should be meeting uh, you guys again pretty soon. And perhaps you might think in the meantime, if you could find out or advise us what best practice is on the issues that have been raised, which, which we need to address, to have greater power, greater authority, whether it's with yourselves or with the, another, you know, the, the charity regulator or, or whatever it is, so that we make sure that all these issues can be fully and properly addressed. I just want to thank the members I know that uh, some of my timelines might have been, people might have been that happy with them. I think, I think we showed as an Oireachtas, as a committee, that we carried this uh, debate fairly, objectively, appropriately, and within all of the rules and regulations we have to abide by, and that the truth and the facts that have come out here today are very important and will influence uh, policy makers and politicians, and most of all the court of public opinion, are extremely interested in all of these issues and I look forward uh, you know, to continuing our discussion with you later. And can I just say, if the Joint Committee is now adjourned until tomorrow, the 4th of April at 11am, is that agreed? Agreed, and thank you all very much. Thank you.